WeatherTech Sports Car Championship on IMSA Radio. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the shortest circuit that we go to on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship calendar. John Hindoff, Jeremy Shaw, and Shay Adam with you, bringing you the action live from Lime Rock Park. Let's head straight to Shay Adam, who is on site and in the pit lane. It's a beautiful afternoon as it is now there with you, and I hear engines have fired. Yes, you do. Beth Peretta gave the command to fire up the engines. A woman who's from about 40 minutes away from this track very much said that this track raised her. No one more appropriate to give the command to get all of these 20 engines fired, leading them out behind the Acura safety car, or pace car, I should say, as it is right now. Was Ross Gunn, our pole sitter, following right behind him, hot on his heels. Jack Hawksworth. We now have most of the GTD field rolling as well behind Mike Skeen, the pole sitter. For class but he starts sixth overall so he is on the wrong side of the grid for the start of today's race as far as the clean side of the racetrack is concerned all the cars are rolling i see alan metney going by in the 91 kelly moss with riley porsche followed closely by alan brynjolfsson in the 77 right motorsport porsche and last but definitely not least sheena monk the acura and all of a sudden it gets quiet but it's only going to be quiet for a couple of seconds because this being a 1.474 mile track means that i get to see the cars a lot and often uh, upstate Connecticut, just outside Lakeville, and a one and a half miles or thereabouts. The chicane is in play at turn five, the uphill. Seven corners uh, in theory. Uh, depends if you count the individual corners in the chicane. That would add a couple or three. Jeremy Shaw, uh, this is going to be an absolute crack of the qualifying times were in were within a that's hair of each other. The GTDs are all lined up behind the GTD pros. That's how they're qualified for once. Yeah, indeed. That's kind of unusual to have all the pro cars ahead of the uh, non-pro cars, but not, as you say, not by very much. But boy, we saw some stunning times yesterday in qualifying. The old lap record uh, was a 51.0. Uh, 50.593, almost half a second faster than that, was our pulse overall pulse that had Ross Gunn. Uh, and similar story in uh, GTD, because the old record uh, was uh, actually set by Trent Hinman of 51.4 back in 2019, 51.1 for Mike Skeen in the Mercedes yesterday. Hello to Brody, Flat Floor, who was out at a very similar racetrack earlier on this week with his 944. He was out at Alton Park, and that kind of reminds me uh, of this circuit. Lots of undulations, a variety of corners, a little bit longer on the full track there. Uh, in fairness, Brody tuned in on the World Feed in the UK. Uh, no via player in the UK this weekend. So if you go to imsa.tv, uh, if you're listening on IMSA Radio, RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited network of channels, uh, and you want to see the World Feed pictures, you can. No interruptions. Uh, live with uh, the IMSA Radio audio uh, all the way through in the UK and most of the places uh, around the world. If there's no network TV deal, then all you have to do is go to imsa.tv or go to imsaradio.com and click on the hamburger on the top left and then select live video. You can do that from radiolamont.com as well, where you'll see the schedule for the rest of the day if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen because we've got more racing coming for you. But for now, our focus is on the FCP Euro Grand Prix presented by Liquid Molly. It's going to be an essay in and an exercise in con concentration and execution. It's all about perfect performance here. Strategy will play a part, as will this short lap. No time, really, to certainly get a stop and hold penalty. And if you get your pit stops wrong, you're going to lose probably a lap and a half, possibly two laps to your competitors if they manage to pit under a yellow. Yellows aren't pre prevalent here, though. It does tend to go long sets of green for a decent amount of time with just under four laps of safety car the average since IMSA has been coming here the big the big talking point this weekend is tires this track is hard on tires left sides and left rear in particular uh, are really well worked here and this is a track with the temperature at the moment, 43 Celsius on the track. That's 109 Fahrenheit. That's still 
probably 7 Celsius, 15, 14, 15 Fahrenheit, cooler than it was earlier on in the weekend. Those are our Porsche keys to the race. We will refresh those as we go through the race. We'll also be looking for our BDO nose strategy winners. They'll be well won today, I think. The whole field then, 20 cars, all GTDs, all with the same performance potential. Beth Beretta waves the green flag as Ross Gunn leads them down into Big Ben for the first time and pulls the Aston Martin into the middle of the road in that grey car. Make sure he had absolutely no opportunity uh, for Jack Hawksworth to go around the outside, the inside, he would have had to go over the top, although we've seen that this year in uh, GT Racing for IMSA, but not in this particular championship. Inception Racing with the McLaren, the black and red car right in the mix. Frederick Scharndorf trying to get on terms with the leader in class, goes up the inside into the uphill chicane and the side-by-side -side contact with the court of Mercedes, the green and black car. Shandoff started a lap further back because Mike Skeen was gridded on the outside of the third row of the grid alongside the Faf Porsche. And there was an opportunity there for Shandoff, the pro driver in that car, to try and nick the lead away quickly. Did have a look at it, hasn't managed to do it, but will want to clear that green and dark grey Mercedes as quick as he can. In fairness, Mike Skeen was trying to put a move on Patrick Peeler there and there was a bit of carbon fibre went uh, missing from one of those two cars. Thankfully though Jeremy Shaw exactly the sort of excitement, exactly the sort of frenetic start but everybody is still pointing in the right direction. Yeah that was exciting wasn't it? Uh, really a uh, good start there and a good opportunity try there by Mike Skeen but a good sensible driver for both of them. I mean, Frederick Shandorf could have really made things extremely difficult, but it'd been awfully risky. So hats off to him, I think, for deciding discretion to better part of Valor there, uh, tucking into that second position. That's where he qualified. That's where he is for the moment. But some uh, super early skirmishes there, but a good early fast start here uh, for Ross Gunn. Possible problems for Misha Goikberg as he went back the, past the pit lane. Sheer Adam, what was the problem with that car? Uh, his right front fender is flapping, John. The bit that goes over the tyre, it's actually been knocked loose, and that will affect the handling of that car. The 78, which is the 14th racing powered by USRT, has had a difficult weekend so far. They had some damage to the grill of that car in the first practice that actually resulted in them parking it early. So I'm going to walk down there and make sure that everything is still okay. Yeah, they ran into the back of the Andretti. Um, Aston Martin, uh, welcome back to them for their second goal. At this, they'll be a full-time entrance into this championship next year in the GTD category with an Aston Martin vantage. Andretti, uh, uh, Jared Andretti, actually running uh, in that car at the moment as the leaders have gone through. And already, Jeremy Shaw, three laps. You get value for money uh, here at Lion Rock Park. Yeah, do indeed so. And the uh, fastest lap there for, of the race uh, on lap uh, three for Patrick Pile, who's managed to muscle his way past Jules Gugnon uh, on uh, on that uh, last lap. Last lap on lap before, might have been lap before actually. Uh, so uh, the Faf Porsche up from fifth on the grid to fourth now, uh, and that has just set the fastest up 52.250, uh, which by the way, uh, on lap three, is a new lap record. The old mark was set last year uh, by uh, Alex Riberas, well, in, in GTD Pro, that is, at a 52.3, but Jules Gugnon did a 51.7 in non pro last season. Gonna have to keep an eye on that Lamborghini. Misha Goitberg in the Lamborghini Huracan, the 40, number 78 car, green and black, one of a number of green and black cars out there, but you can tell a Lamborghini Huracan from an EMG GT3, can't you? I don't have to tell you that one. Looks like the luggage compartment cover at the front of that car is starting to move around down the front straight and in the pit lane Shea is watching the team they are getting some 100 mile an hour tape gaffer tape call it what you will just in case that car has to come in race control will be keeping an eye on that they do not like uh, to 
see cars with flapping bodywork that might end up on the track. New fastest lap for GTD last time around by Mike Skeen. He's having to do that, Jeremy, because he's under pressure from Fred Shandoff in the inception McLaren, who will want to clear him. And two BMWs together. That is the Turner, yellow and blue, number 96, going by and taking the position. Patrick Gallagher and Madison Snow side by side. Madison had just sneaked ahead going into uh, Big Bend and got his nose ahead for a moment and then Patrick managed to fight back. It's three BMWs in a row there with the blue and uh, yellow car, Patrick Gallagher, the red, white and black of Madison Snow, Bill Oberlin in the black and blue. And Madison just going round the outside, just about got his nose in head, uh, head going into the middle part of the corner, but had to give it up on the exit. Patrick did give him room, that's all right. Race control do like the... Mm, I've now seen that from another angle, maybe he didn't. But race control do like uh, to see drivers being respectful. And there is just a tiny bit of damage in front of the right front wheel on the Paul Miller Racing red, white and black car. IMSA Radio, IMSA TV together, opening moments of a two hours and 40 minute contest. And we've had six minutes exactly, that's six laps. And we are as exactly as breathless as we thought we'd be all the way through this race. Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, brilliant, isn't it? And a good little uh, inter, inter mark battle going on there with the three BMWs. As you say, uh, Madison Snow thought about it and he, he almost. He was never really going to make the pass, but he was nosing alongside, but just was given no room on the exit by Patrick Gallagher. That's fair enough, I think. Uh, you've got to be completely alongside if you're going to make a pass, and he wasn't. But he tried hard, and he, he knows he's got a good car uh, because he's already won three races this season. Leads the championship, does Madison so? So he doesn't want to make sure he wants to make sure he doesn't stick it in his nose where it doesn't belong. Uh, and he has just uh, set, by the way, the fastest uh, reset the uh, fastest lap of the race in GTD, 52.6 that time around for Madison Snow in that number one BMW. New fastest lap though for a race leader, 51.873 for uh, Ross Gunn. He is flying at the front, all of a sudden he's put 1.7 seconds between himself and, uh, and the, the three cars battling for second, the Lexus Chevrolet and the Porsche. So, settling down at the front with Ross Gunn with a two second advantage and that is a significant advantage uh, in uh, this particular championship and around this particular cir circuit. Uh, Sheena Monk has got by Alan Brynjolfsson, battles all the way through the field and that is for 19th and 20th, the Acura NSX, the green and white number 66 car of Sheena Monk and Gradient Racing. Just hasn't been on the pace this weekend. The team have rather been scratching their heads. They're not sure. Balance of the car seems all right, but it just doesn't have the speed that they were hoping. But Sheena has made up a position, is ahead now of the bright yellow Porsche 911 of Alan Brynjolsson. Yeah, that's right, Sean. She did that on the first lap, has maintained that, and she's not losing out much to uh, Alan Metley and, and Jared Andretti, who are battling uh, just ahead of her on the road. So she's certainly doing a nice job. She's uh, you know, gaining experience around this race. Yes, yeah, not, not an easy track uh, to uh, to get to grips with is Lime Rock, and uh, she does, you know, doesn't have a lot of experience compared to most of the most of the other drivers around her. So doing a nice early stint in this race and holding on to that 19th position. Uh, Mike Skeen has just reset fastest lap of the race in GTD by a couple of fractions of a second. Uh, so, but he's, he's, well, he's actually, for the first time, extended his margin uh, to second place to uh, just about a second now over Frederick Shandorf in the McLaren. Down towards the diving turn for Team Kortov. That is the leader in GTD. Those are the cars with the green backgrounds on the numbers, the green wing end plates at the back of the cars, door mirrors, and on the edges of the windscreen banners as well. Down into a very tricky turn one. We were talking about this in our earlier broadcasts uh, on IMSA Radio RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited Network of Channels. This track on paper looks dead simple. It's a big, big right-hander, a little left-hander, a little right-hander, a wiggly straight, then a little chicane, then a right-hander, then a right-hander. Pretty simple, eh? Yeah, on paper, yes. But you don't race it on paper. 
you actually, when you get out there, Jeremy Shaw, this is a track that has quite a lot of nuance uh, to it. And for those who know it well, they have a really big advantage here. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, a lot of drivers uh, cut their racing teeth at Skip Barber Racing School where they did a lot of laps around here in the old uh, RT2000 cars, uh, which is a great learning tool. But uh, yeah, this is uh, really interesting. You know, that the fastest lap in GTD uh, reset again that last time. This time it was Misha Goikberg. So uh, damaged or not, that Forte Racing powered by USA Australia's Lamborghini is fast. And uh, uh, Misha, having lost the position, on the first lap to Roman DeAndres is hanging right with him. Already uh, 15 minutes gone, which is extraordinary. We have been talking about Lime Rock Park type being different from anywhere else. Big BMW battle in the middle of the GT D field. This is from fifth on down. The 96 blue and yellow car coming down to the final right hand and now is Patrick Gallagher. Uh, he is in sixth position, 10th in the overall. Then the red, white and black car, Madison Snow. And then behind them, just a little bit further back, Bill Oberland for Turner Motorsport. So that's two Turner cars. And the meat in the sandwich is the BMW of Paul Miller Racing, for whom this, uh, in terms of the uh, Paul Miller uh, part of the team, is their home race, Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, that's right. They've got a lot of guests here, do every year, had a lot of success here uh, in the, over the years as well. They've uh, won this race uh, several times. They've been second a couple of times as well and uh, looking for another win here. Uh, last last year, the, uh, they came away with the, with the win. It was a bit, they were a bit lucky last season because they were running fourth, looking, looking like they were going to finish in fourth place. But then uh, there was a problem for the, uh, for the uh, Lexus of Aaron Tielitz. Uh, there was a late pass on Roman De Andres and the Aston Martin, and then on the final lap, the Windward Racing Mercedes ran out of fuel, so they came away with the win. Uh, and uh, looking to, they're going to have to, yeah. They, after qualifying yesterday, quite a long way down the order in that number one car, uh, in the uh, eighth, ninth position in the class, so they knew they were going to have to uh, have a little bit of luck on their side today. But clearly, they've got a car that works very, very well kind of stuck now behind Patrick Gallagher in that Turner Motorsport similar BMW. Guys from PMR were here till late last night. Paul Miller racing. Sheer Adam, what were they doing? Just last minute changes to the car, trying to wring a bit more speed out of it. Trying to find anything they could, John, because this being Paul Miller's home race, as you rightly points out, means that they have a big crowd on hand and they are looking to perform once again. Madison and Brian, when they've driven together, have finished first here twice their second here twice and their only race where they did not finish on the podium was a fourth place back in 2016 so there's a lot of pressure on this team championship leaders in both the overall championship and sprint to deliver this weekend but clearly the work of the crew that's paid off because madison is flying yeah, 11 o'clock last night the guy's still here at the track so that at the moment is that battle going on in the middle of the GTD field. Let's give you a VP Racing in race update. At the front of the field, Ross Gunn, two seconds ahead of the field. The Aston Martin V8 Vantage, the number 23, the dark grey with blue highlighted machine, is ahead of the very yellow and black Lexus RCF GT. That is the number 14 car in second. He's got about a second and a half on the bright yellow Antonio Garcia driven Corvette. Up into fourth position, Patrick Pele, Faf Motorsport. They started in fifth and they've got ahead of Gilles Gounon in the red, white and blue WeatherTech Racing Mercedes, the number 79 in fifth in GTD. And overall, Mike Skeen leads from pole position in GTD. Frederick Shandoff is in second. That's the team caught off the dark coloured Mercedes, number uh, number 32, and then the Inception red and black McLaren ahead of the second heart of racing team. That's the number 27 car, Roman De Angelis. Let's get down and speak to some of the drivers. Sheer Adam is in the pit lane. With Faf Motorsport and the Platte Porsche, Klaus Backler, Patrick Pile already up one position. Is this just how this race is going to go? You're going to have to be patient. Yeah, he did a really good start. Um, I think in the second lap he could pass Kuno for before. It's a long race and uh, I mean, I expect a lot of things will happen, especially at the end of the stints. 
It's my first time to be here, but uh, from seeing from the last years and also speaking to the team, so I think it, everything is possible. Uh, it's your first time here, only seven corners, but they're seven difficult corners, aren't they? Yeah, it's not too easy, I have to say. I expected it's easier to come here, but uh, the last two corners especially are really quick. I would say the first sector is okay, but uh, especially the last two corners and the chicane are quite tricky. And in the end, uh, if you are one ten for off here, it's quite a lot. So you need to find every hundred of a second in every corner. Thanks, Klaus. Thank you. What did we hear earlier on? Uh, a tenth of a second here. We were being told it is worth half a second in most places. At least, great to hear Klaus Backler uh, here for FAF for the whole season. So all of these tracks, other than Daytona, are brand new to him in his American adventure. So he's adding to his racing Palmares this, uh, this year and loving every single lap of it from what we've heard during the season so far. So Ross Gunn just at the moment controlling the field uh, at the moment down through turn seven he's got the length of the front straight Jeremy before he starts catching that battle between Sheena Monk and Alan Brynjolfsson uh, at the moment his last lap was a 52-4 they're doing uh, high 53s, low 54s at the moment. So it's going to take him a couple of laps before he's onto the back of the traffic. Yeah, it'll take more than that. Uh, 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 you know, they're closing in, but not particularly quickly. Uh, it's, I mean, you know, we're now, what, 18 laps in, and as you say, mid 52s for the race leader. Last three laps, we've been within three thousandths of a second. Previous lap was 52.4, uh, and uh, the few before that were 52.3. So settling into a rhythm here, that gap, gaps between each of the five cars in GCD Pro kind of equidistant to the moment about a second and a half or so a little bit more between first and second than uh, third and fourth and fourth and fifth and fourth and fifth but uh, it's you know it's early stages and you know note that they want to make sure they don't take too much out of these Michelin tires early on Right turn lover who's right in the middle of Europe on IMSA, at IMSA Radio asking, in case of a safety car, are GTD Pro and GTD regarded as the same or as different classes? Will there be wave bys and pass around? Well, th this has caused some um, consternation earlier on because um, in terms of how we grid them up, they are considered the same class. So if we'd had a GTD car on pole or a GTD car in second, then it would have gridded up there. But Shea Adam has been perusing the regulations and can give us uh, the answer for this particular race, being as it's a GTD only event. Race control actually thought to address this in the driver's meeting and specified, if we go to full course caution, the car that is furthest ahead on the racetrack, i.e. in the lead of the race, determines which class gets to pit first because it would be a separate pit incident. So right now, GTD Pro would pit before GTD. But if we go through the pit stop sequence and the GTD Pro cars all pit, but GTD stays out and then there's a yellow, GTD would get to pit first. Okay, very interesting. So not all 20 cars will pit at the same time under a safety car. Of course, they might choose to come in at similar times under green flag racing. Headlamp flasher built into the Porsche, flashing 19 to the dozen there down towards the first corners. Alan Brynjolsson is trying to distract Sheena Monk in the gradient racing Acura. Sheena, um, studiously ignoring what's going on behind her as that Porsche is weaving left to right. She's driving her own lines, hitting her own marks, stays out to the racing line. Alan looking down the inside at the right-hander at turn four and just drifts off onto the dirty part of the circuit for a moment and that gives Sheena two or three cars lengths. Sheena doing exactly the right thing there, Jeremy. She's not um, amending her line. The, it's the typical focus forward. Don't drive in your mirrors. Yeah, absolutely right. And, uh, you know, she, she's under a fair bit of pressure, certainly. Uh, Brendan Olsen has got close on several occasions. I'm sure he feels he's faster, but feeling you're faster and making a pass are two entirely different scenarios. And uh, uh, as uh, as of 21 laps, he hasn't been able to do so. It was that first lap that Sheena made the move for that position. And Alan Brendan Olsen's just got to kind of stick there uh, and uh, and go with it. He's much quicker, much, much, much quicker through Big Bend than the Acura, but he's, she's going to keep that inside line heading into the uh, the left-hander, and there's no way past for Alan Brynjolfsson. Way faster he is through that corner. 
uh, Big Bend in particular, but no way past yet for Alan Brynjolfs. Sheena um, building her experience in this category of racing, has done, done some single manufacturer racing, paired up with Catherine Legg, who's done everything, up to and including uh, IndyCar, very successfully qualified for the Indy 500 uh, this year uh, in fine style. Not yet raced at Le Mans. That's one thing that's missing from uh, her racing CV. Much to her chagrin, to be honest. Almost got there a couple of times recently. And Catherine doing uh, a fine job with this team, who know which way is up. As I said earlier on, for some reason, and I'm not sure anybody really knows, it's the only NSX uh, in the race this weekend. It just hasn't had the performance they were hoping for and uh, they've been trying a few different things. New to the championship, the number 94 is the Andretti Autosport Aston Martin Vantage. We've seen this car once before. No LMP3s in the championship next year when we have the full class at, uh, out, set of classes out together. So some of the LMP3 teams are going to the VP Racing Challenge. Some of them are going to LMP2, Andretti uh, racing, uh, Andretti Autosport has decided to come and play in GTD next year. So they've chosen Aston Martin and the Vantage with the V8 4-litre twin turbo. And finding their way here, this is part of their learning for a full season next year, Jeremy. Yeah, very much so. And uh, yeah, the, the car's been competitive this weekend. Uh, Gabby uh, Chavez will take over from Gerald, Gerald Andretti uh, probably at the first round of pit stops, but he's doing a good job here. Is Jarrett to hold on ahead of uh, Alan Metney in that to Kelimos with Riley Porsche, the battle for uh, 12th and 13th in the class. And super to see Andretti Autosport you know, spreading its wings. <laughs> no, no surprise there. I mean, they're involved in just about every form of motorsport <laughs> there is. On road uh, and except for Formula road. Yeah, yeah, Yes, indeed. Whether it's got, yes, whether it's on the hard surfaces or not. Uh, want to be in Formula One as well. Uh, but uh, they'd love to be involved here in, in IMSA, and uh, this is a good uh, toe in the water, certainly, for Andretti Autosport. A bit of a slide there from Jarrett, uh, but he's uh, maintaining that position. Meanwhile, just looking at the front of the field, the, the lap times have dropped off just a little bit. 52 eights now uh, by the race leader, uh, and uh, similar, similar lap times all the way down. The gaps between the top five cars stay pretty much the same even though the, 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 the lap times have gone from uh, 52.3 to 52.4 to 54, 52.5 and now 52.8 for the last three or four laps. So 52.7s they come across the line to complete lap 25 for our race leader, Ross Gunn. Uh, talking about Andretti and Formula One, we talked about it last week and this week actually on Midweek Motorsport, 8 o'clock UK time on a Wednesday on RS1. Uh, and uh, it, the intel that's coming out of uh, Formula One and the FIA is that they are one of two teams who have been put forward as candidates to uh, extend the Formula One grid. Now, that doesn't mean there will be chosen. There are more hurdles to, uh, to negotiate for them, um, but that is being discussed at the moment. They've got the tie-up with GM, of course, which would bring... Uh, another auto manufacturer, a huge auto manufacturer, into Formula One. The problem is that the 10 teams at the moment don't want to share their toys. Actually, they don't want to share the money. So that is uh, going to be a bit of an issue unless somebody gets tough with the teams that are there at the moment. We'll be following that story this week uh, and throughout the next few weeks on Midweek Motorsports. Shea Adam has had her first pit caller and it's from the GTD Pro ranks, Shea Adam. In and out for Jules Gunon, fuel and left side tires only. So that is the first domino to fall in this race and it's not even drive change or a full set of Michelins. Interesting, that was after 26 laps. Uh, that is effectively half an hour, Jeremy, that they have been out there. That's not really helping them. I still think they've probably, unless this yellow flag here, they've probably got two stops still to do, which is what everyone else is looking to do it from. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I, they can they can probably do an, an hour and... Maybe they can do an hour and ten minutes. If they can do an hour and ten, then... Uh, they're going to have to do more than that uh, to get to the end because it was, it was a couple of minutes ago. They've got two hours, 
um, and two hours and eight minutes they, they would need uh, to do it just on one more pit stop. It's awfully tight for that. And of course, what it doesn't do is is give you the the margin on, on tires. You've got to do longer stints on yeah. the tires if you can equalize these stints out. But I'm sure what they're hoping for, I mean, they, they were maintaining position. They're about three seconds behind the Faf Porsche when he came in. But now with, with fresh uh, left side tires, uh, we'll see what his pace is once he gets back up to speed. He hasn't. He is still on the lead lap. Is he? Uh, with everybody else, yes. Wow. I think. Uh, let me check. Because he wasn't far behind, you know. That's, no, that's... true enough. 79. Uh, where has he dropped into? Yes, he's dropped into the gap in front of Sheena Monk and Alan Brynjolfsson. So, yeah, he's three quarters of a lap back. So that was a speedy stop, uh, undoubtedly uh, helped by the fact that they didn't have to put full fuel on. They probably only needed half a tank of fuel. Uh, and Shea Adam has just been down there to check that there wasn't anything untoward, uh, i.e. a slow puncture. And Shea, what has the team said? Play and stop. That's part of their strategy. And now, as we talked about the dominoes starting to fall, guess who else is up on the wall? That would be the leader, the 23 Heart of Racing. They have two Michelins up on the wall, but they have another two that are just behind. That's it. That's interesting, that. They, maybe they've, they've worked out they could do that without losing a lap, and then when everybody else sure. comes in, um, if they equalize that stop, they'll need less fuel less time in the pitch i don't know let's see how that works out we're watching we have a, a, a special award that we make in all of the imsa weather tech sports car championship it's brought to us with the uh, bdo accounting tax and uh, advisory services group they know finance and they think they, they've got finance strategy sorted globally and that's what they're looking to reward here. So let's see who gets that strategy call correct. As the Lexus of the number 14, Vassa Sullivan, that's another pro car into the pit lane. Shea Adam, Jack Hawksworth is with you. And he will be staying behind the wheel of the 14 Lexus, but this is a rear tire change. Let's see if they're going to do fronts. Uh, yeah, they're doing four. They're doing four tires on the Lexus. So this is different than what we saw with the Mercedes. But the other difference that I noticed with the Aston Martin, it's getting very close to catching Alan Brynjolfsson and Sheena Monk, John. So this might be a call to get Ross Gunn out of potentially having to pass lap traffic. Uh, uh, Jeremy, you had mentioned that the lap times were coming down. No tyre warmers here, so the outlap is going to be particularly antsy for Jack Hawksworth. He's got the number uh, 80 PJ High and Air All Racing car. That's 15th. That's where he's dropped down to from 4th. So that's the better part of 10 places. Gilles Gounon is not that far back as he is trying to make his way past the... Uh, Alan Metney, Kelly Moss, number 91 Porsche. Remember, that's battling with the blue and white Aston. And they were side by side not so very uh, long ago. But I, I think Jared Andretti just stayed ahead. Yes, he did. So there's a decent little battle there building up in the mid-teens uh, of the uh, of the field here. But Jack Hawks, with, I think crucially for him, managed to get out ahead of that A all racing bright green T-Rex Porsche. Indeed so, and it, this is fascinating, isn't it? Because I'm just looking at the lap times of Jules Gounod, 54-2 last time around. I thought it was a... F that's that's, Leader is that's in. slow. Uh, but they're covering now these cars that are, that are going to be turning quick laps once they get up to speed because the last couple of laps for, for the race leader were 53-1. So all of a sudden, he, he lost about three or four tenths of a second per lap. There was a bit of trouble connecting the fuel nozzle to the car, but they did manage to get it plugged in, losing about a second and a half. Four tire stop for the heart of race. Mr. Martin, number 23, Ross Gunn staying aboard. They are ready to drop the car. Now, fuel nozzle comes out. Ross Gunn fires it. He goes. I would say maybe two seconds lost on that stop in total. Where does he rejoin? Behind the 14 Vassar Sullivan Lexus. Oh, right. Okay. So that's interesting. So the earlier stoppers, well, Gunon didn't win out, but it looks like Hawksworth might have as the Corvette comes in. Hello to Simi Rich, who's on the hillside. It's packed up there. Hello to all you fans listening to us uh, on the PA. And thanks to everybody at Lime Rock Park for plugging us in. Corvette into the pit lane. 
Antonio Garcia getting service. Hello, Simeon. Aaron, pleasure to meet you guys earlier. Four sticker Michelins for Antonio Garcia. Once again, no driver change, no hint of a driver change for this car whatsoever. Car drops off the air jacks after 16 seconds, waiting on fuel to now go. 18 seconds of fuel total for the Corvette. Where does Antonio Garcia rejoin? Again, behind Jack Hawksworth, but ahead of Ross Gunn. Massive shake up here, Jeremy, in these early stops at the head of GTD Pro. Mike Skeen hasn't stopped yet. He's 17 seconds away uh, from the leader, a little bit more than that. Only Patrick Pile in the Porsche uh, still to stop. Now, Porsche haven't always had things their own way this year with the new uh, RS, the new GT3 car on the 992 body shape, but their strategy's been very, very good indeed, even when they haven't had the pace. They're doing something different at the moment if they don't come in in a lap or two. Fascinating, isn't it? It's really, really interesting. And uh, uh, Ross Gunn, though, he's kind of got trapped a little bit behind uh, Jared Andretti, I think. Has he got a close way past yet? Another uh, Aston Martin, of course. You want to get past him uh, quickly, particularly as he got Jules Gunion on his tail as well. So uh, it's, a, it's about that, you know, the, where they come out in the traffic, that's the critical factor here. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, they both got past uh, Jared Andretti, the two pro cars, the Aston Martin, kind of a 23, and the WeatherTech. Mercedes had got past, but uh, uh, Jack Hawks was there. That was great work by that uh, uh, Vassar Sullivan team. 52-5 uh, last time around for Jack Hawks with, whereas the other guys are uh, doing 53s, Gunior and Gunn. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Patrick Pile, uh, the previous time was a 53-7. This was a 54-2 for Pile. Uh, has he, yes, he's just had to work his way past those two cars have just gone lap down, 66 and 77. So uh, that cost them a little bit of time on that last lap. But once again, I think the Porsche showing well on its tires uh, and turning good lap times. We'll have to see now you get clear, clear lap uh, next time around. We'll see what that lap time is. Yeah, past those uh, two cars that are still battling. Uh, at the tail end of the field, and Sheena Monk is still ahead of Alan Brynjolfsson. Interestingly, whilst uh, the cars ahead, their lap times have you know dropped off by a second and a second and a half when their tyres were wearing, Sheena is still lapping around about uh, the... Well, she's just done a 54.9. She was lapping mid-54s uh, be before that. So the tyre degradation on that car and the way Sheena is driving it, all right, not as quickly as those ahead, but there is a way to do this, Jeremy, whereby she's not losing that much in terms of her fastest lap performance, and she's staying ahead of Alan Brynjolfsson. I'm actually quite impressed with that. Only 10 seconds behind uh, Alan Metning, who's having that great battle with Jared Andretti and Gilles Gunon and Ross Gunn and PJ Hyatt. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? Really is uh, cat and mouse stuff here going on at the moment. 53-3. Last time around, though, uh, for the uh, race-leading uh, Porsche. I think that might have been the lap on which he, he got past, uh, overtook. Yeah, 52.9 as he came, completes that uh, 37 for Patrick Pile. And, and for uh, Antonio, Antonio Garcia. Garcia. Yes, yeah, sorry. He's just had his best lap of the race at a 52.3. The, the fastest lap it was a 51.8. That was by Ross Gunn uh, pretty early in this race on lap seven. So still, the top 10 cars have yet to pit. Make that the top 11 cars have yet to pit. That's the top 10 in GTD. And Patrick Pile in that satin black and plaid driveway supported Porsche coming through underneath the crossover bridge now, down towards turn seven, the final right-hander, and onto the start-finish straight. No sense that he's coming in yet. The team are ready, just in case. Uh, they're, I think they're pushing. We're now some, what, 39, 40 minutes into the race, and they're ready just in case there's an incident that will bring out a safety car, and with a bit of luck, they'll be able to dive straight in and not lose out. But I think their plan, Jeremy, is to go as long as they can in that car at the moment because they're not actually losing that much time. 53 flat last time around. Uh, that's right. Uh, and you know, that's uh, or at least uh, equalised the three stints uh, in this race. Uh, and that's going to be fascinating because otherwise these, these other cars are going to have to run a longer stint. We saw how much after uh, around about 20... 
five laps was when all of a sudden we went from 52.7s to 53s for the uh, the leading Aston Martin uh, and the other contenders as well. The Porsche at that stage was still uh, behind the the Corvette, but it closed in very quickly just before the Corvette came in to make the pit stop. And now he's still running the same sort of pace. 52.8 last time around for Patrick Pile. Share Adam, a couple of questions coming in at IMSA Radio about tyre allocation. Uh, it, it's not too bad here this weekend. So taking two tyres in those early stops for the teams that did, that was a strategy call rather than a let's save some tyres to the end of the race call. Yeah, seven sets for the course of the weekend for all of the teams here this weekend means that everybody's got enough to make it through. We had enough to actually do mock quali in practice, a couple of teams doing multiple mock qualies. So we had some teams scuffing in their tires, like Bright Motorsport, they scuffed in about three sets at the beginning of practice one, whereas everybody else still has shiny new Michelins. And I'm seeing a lot of actual stickers on tires, it means that they are new new as opposed to slightly new. Antonio Garcia going past Alec Yudel. That was the battle for 12th and 13th position. More importantly, that springs Antonio Garcia. And he now sets off up the road to chase the next set of cars down. Both of those machines uh, had... Uh, sorry, Alec, of course, had not made his stop. So he is uh, on the tyres on which he started this race. Well, that was a really important move by Antonio Garcia, who's now two and a half seconds behind Jack Hawksworth and the Vasa Sullivan Lexus team by far have come out of those early stops for GTD Pro, the best, Jeremy. Yeah, they have. They've got him out in clean air. He closed the gap rapidly to the two cars in front of him, to a couple of GTD cars, uh, with both of which he has now passed. And he's uh, closing in now on Frankie Montecalvo, who's his teammate at Vassar Vax Sullivan, running, of course, not in a pro class, but in regular GTD. So the two Lexuses is, 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 is together on the racetrack right now. And Jack Hawksworth will want to make that pass and get past Frankie and pull away as much as he can. Next in his sights will be Bill Arblin, who's about three seconds farther up the road. So Patrick Peele coming up to a little bit of traffic as he heads through the uphill. He's yeah. just in, in fact, he's just gone by PJ Hyatt, I think, and he's with now Alan Metney as he dives down towards the final corner. Yeah. It's Alan Metney and Jared Andretti. Time. Yes, exactly my point, Jeremy. That has cost him a bit of time. Those two, the Porsche and the... Uh, and the Andretti Aston just going across the line now. They've been having their own scrap, and that's cost him quite a bit of time. Yeah. Now, oh, off into turn one, two cars. Oh, and it is those two cars that we were just talking about the Andretti Aston and the 91 Porsche of Alan Metney. Full course yellow. That was right in front of Patrick Peele. Now. Was he involved in that incident? Yeah. Was the leader of the race just calling that as they went through? Is the damage to the lead car, there's certainly damage to the 91 Kelly Moss Alan Metney car, that's the dark coloured car with the yellow pinstriping. And that was right in front of the leader and that means the pits are closed. So Patrick Peele is going to lose the advantage that he had and the advantage was half a lap. Wow, big, big turning point of the race. Now, yeah. the GTD Pro leader is in front, so that those cars will have the first opportunity to pit once the pits are open, which they will do once the safety car has neutralised the field. Hearing from race control, it was contact only between the two cars that were battling for position. So that was the Jared Andretti number 94 Aston and the Alan Metney Kelly Moss with Riley Porsche and that is under review the leader not involved in it but that would have woken him up because it was right in front of him as he was catching them up going into big bed wow right yeah, Jeremy put your team yeah. <laughs> right put your put your put your team manager hat on now and well, what does this do? Do you bring all of the other GTD pros in with just on two hours to go? 
Most likely, yes, for a splash of fuel, it'll give them more options later on in the race. Uh, their stops will be much faster than the number nine uh, Porsche because they just need uh, a relatively short amount of fuel. But I would be surprised if we didn't see all of the uh, GTD Pro cars onto the pit lane during this caution period. Uh, they're still all, all on the lead lap together, uh, but uh, all that hard work that the uh, FAF Motorsports team had done is most likely going to go by the wayside here. And... Uh, uh, well, wait a minute. Are we going to have the uh, the pass around? Well, no, wait, they, they, they all pit on different laps. Don't Correct. They? They, they pit on different laps. We, we will get. Cars, we are going. In. Yeah, we are However, going to get a pass around. Before the are we? Yeah, because Bef bec the 91 of Alan Metney now is looking through the headlamp uh, cutout or one of the intake cutouts on the front. I'm not sure you can see very much of anything at all because the hood, the bonnet of that car, and I do mean the bonnet, the thing in front of the driver has popped up. Um, any GTD cars who are in between the safety car and their leader will get a wave by. They will get a pass around. So that would be, um, I reckon, PJ Hyatt, Sheena Monk uh, and Alan Brynjolfsson. Um, so, uh, and Alan Metney must uh, get one as well. So that suggests to me that Patrick Peele, Jeremy, hadn't made the pass when uh, when that incident happened. He was sitting in, ready to go there. Oh, and yeah, he did go through. But of course, he's GTD Pro. Uh, that was just a mistake from Alan Metney. Missed his breaking point going into turn one. Maybe he was concerned. Uh, about the leader coming up behind him. Uh, missed his breaking point by a considerable margin and went straight to the rear of the uh, of the Aston Martin and uh, basically put that car in the wall. It's a long way to the wall from where the impact were, was, but the rear Michelins were off the ground on the Jared Andretti car and skating across the grass. That car has already been retired. Uh, let's go down to Shea Adam. The pits are open, so Patrick Peeley is the first of the GTD Pro Cars to be able to take advantage and does so. And four of the five came in, the 23 Aston Martin being the only one that stayed out. It is a fuel and driver change as well as four new tires for what is now Klaus Backler. Left side tires only for the number three Corvette. It looked like they did left side tires for the number 14 Lexus as well. And the 79 just left with the fuel probe attached. It ripped out of the fueler's hands. I'm going to go make sure that that man is okay because he actually went down kind of hard. But that will be a penalty for the Mercedes team of WeatherTech. Jules Gunion still behind the wheel. And uh, Klaus Backler is out last of the cars that stopped in GTD Pro. But Ross Gunn staying out for Aston Martin. Hey, we're going to be struggling for our BDO No Strategy Award here, Jeremy, because there's so many different, different yeah. tactics being laid on the table really early on. Right, that's right, and uh, the uh, harder racing team, Aston Martin, car 23, I think, did not come into the pit Correct. lane. So they're Correct, that's what we said, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, so so they, they're going for that track position. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether that uh, uh, pans out for them, because uh, it was a bit of a struggle early on, I would say, for that car. So uh, just uh, really, really interesting to see how this race is, is unfolding now. And uh, the, there's other cars, as we suggested, the number, number nine car, pit stop was longer so therefore uh, will uh, uh, drop to the back of the, uh, of the of the trailer cars fuel and tires for the number 12 Lexus and the number 27 Aston Martin no driver changes for either of them no driver change either for the number one Paul racing BMW first car to roll once again is the number 96 Turner Taco Mobile that still has Patrick Gallagher behind the wheel because minimum drive time has not yet been met we've got the 32 back into the fast lane and contact to look like with Paul Miller racing as Madison Snow rejoined. Nope, the Mercedes is okay and the BMW is okay, but the leader coming into the pits now leaves fifth, fourth on the racetrack. One of the slower stops was actually the 70 Inception Racing McLaren. They did a driver change over to Brendan Areeb, who is the bronze rated driver. Both drivers in the car need their minimum drive time in 45 minutes, but now is a good time to put Brendan in and then put Frederick Shandorf back in for the end of this race. Fuel and tires for all those cars. Thank you, Cher. 
and some remedial work going on to the iFly and Paget sponsored Porsche that was the instigator of the accident. It's being looked at at the moment. Uh, I can't see anything other than a penalty uh, for that. I mean, I, I have been surprised uh, in some series with some decisions made by race control, but I suspect that uh, that will be uh, a drive through at the very least. Now, Misha Goikberg and Alec Udell for Forte Lamborghini and Kelly Moss, the, the sister car to the one that's in the pits, pits at the moment, that's the number 92 car. Uh, they stayed out, so they are ahead of Ross Gunn and the Heart of Racing team. Now, he stayed out as well, but he hadn't got up to them in the GTD line. They have not yet pitted since the start of the race. Now, the WeatherTech number 79 AMG uh, left with pit equipment attached. Shea Adam has been down there. Everybody all right down there, Shea? Yep, just got the thumbs up. So that is a huge sigh of relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but always dangerous when something like that happens. At IMSA Radio, my goodness. Hello to Gareth Evans, tuned in at his messy bench, uh, working on his 787B. Uh, he's got a few other projects going on there. Hello to Ella Filipponi, first time back track side since the big, well, you know what. Wonderful to see and hear live race cars again. Well done, you. And welcome back to live action. Thanks for listening in to us as well. Behind the wall now for the Alan Metney number 91, Kelly Moss with Gosh. Riley. Here comes Mika Goish, but Misha Goishberg. Ah, yeah. I know what they've done there. That's drive time, yeah. isn't it? Correct. Shit. Correct, that's exactly right. I've got the Acura from Gradient Racing into the pits as well. This will be Sheena Monk getting out, taking over, will be Catherine Legg. We've got Alan Brynjolfsson handing over to the more than capable Trent Hinman for Wright Motorsports and their number 77 bright yellow Porsche. Misha Goikberg is out. The Canadian has done his duty. Now it's time for Laura Spinelli as he is the first car to join number 92. We heard a little bit earlier from Julian Anlauber who was excited to get his first racing laps around Lime Rock Park. Well, that's about to happen in about five seconds time as he exits the pit lane in the number 92. Kelly Moss with Riley Porsche. And finally, Rexy has been in, and Rexy is going out with Sebastian Prio behind the wheel of the number 80 AO Racing Porsche. Everywhere we turn, Jeremy, and almost at the end of every lap in the last five or six, even before we got to the full course yellow here, we have to talk strategy because those GTD cars stayed out for an extra lap in order to allow the 40 minutes, uh, the 45 minutes, excuse me, to elapse for their minimum driver time. So they're working a slightly different strategy uh, to what's going on uh, in other parts of the GTD field. Correct, uh, John. They, they said actually two laps longer in order to be able to meet that 45 minute minimum. Uh, uh, but it hasn't cost them anything. They'll, they'll be able to uh, rejoin the back of the pack before we go back to green. This is going to be a fairly lengthy caution period. Uh, to get uh, that uh, stricken uh, Aston Martin out of the way. You've got to feel sorry for Jared Andretti. I mean, goodness gracious. Uh, he was taken out uh, on that car's debut at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca by a prototype car that was completely in the wrong uh, and, and now taken out again, this time by a, a GTD competitor. So really bad luck for Andretti Autosport in its second, first and second outings to be taken out with absolutely no fault whatsoever of the driver. They've had a, 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 a not great year altogether. I think that Shea's just said on the talk back, they've only actually finished one race that they've started this year, even with the, uh, G, the um, LMP uh, three car. So it's not been the best of years for them. They want to get through this season and start planning for next year. Hello to Tom Davies, who's joining us in the UK, watching and listening. World Feed TV, available to uh, any territory that doesn't have a network TV feed, uh, imsa.tv, or via the live video button at imsaradio.com, via the top left-hand side, Hamburger. Hello to you, Tom. Thanks for tuning in. An hour and 51 minutes to go, and we're three wide as we go back to green. And it's all the BMWs for a moment that we're across the track there. 
with Paul Miller racing, just managing to hold on to their position. Madison Snow still in that car, as he has to be, of course, because when they pitted, he hadn't done his drive time. A little bit of a bump from the Lexus onto the back of the number 96 BMW, the blue and uh, the blue and yellow car and that was the leader as they went back to green but Madison Snow's gone through and taken that lead so that side by side across the line was for the lead in GTD and I think Madison Snow has snagged that and cleared wow. off that was wow. a really good restart if that is the case just waiting for the rest of the cars to go through no surprise we're going to get a drive through penalty for the number 79 that was leaving with the pit lane equipment attached for the WeatherTech AMG. Catherine Legg down the outside, making a manoeuvre on Seb Prior. The green Porsche in the green and white NSX. Cat right there, almost up on the quarter panel again, but can't get that done. This is part of a battle that goes up the field to Brendan Areeb, who's in 13th position. So that's 13th down to 17th at the moment, all battling for position. Marvellous stuff in GTD. Absolutely right. And it, it, what a great restart that was from, uh, from Madison Snow. I mean, he was third at the restart uh, and first at the end of that first lap. So a brilliant start by him. Uh, meanwhile, in GCD Pro, uh, we are at the start of the race, right? Uh, we haven't had the first 50 laps because the order was exactly the same. 23, 14, 3, 79 and 9. That's how they lined up initially. It wasn't how they were uh, before the round of pit stops, but it's how they are again now until, of course, the number 79 car came into the pits. But that was a brilliant Brilliant restart for Madison Snow, wow. So Ross Gunn, uh, then Jack Hawksworth, then Antonio Garcia in that dark coloured Aston, the Vasa Sullivan yellow and black Lexus next up. And then it's Antonio Garcia in the pretty much old yellow Mobile One Corvette racing machine. New car for them next year. New challenge as well with TF Racing taking two cars into the FIA World Endurance Championship. Oh, and by the way, Shea Adam, you can tick this one off your list. The Le Mans results yes. uh, are now final. Um, the, uh, oh, good. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, there, was, uh, there was some talk about uh, pieces being taken off some of the cars the FIA have done. Uh, so uh, you can tick that off your list. And we have another penalty, this time for Loris Spinelli. Uh, that is failure to adhere to the minimum fuel ref uh, re refueling time. So that's going to be a drive through for the Lamborghini. That's going to be costly, particularly oh, when the cars man. are all so close together. Yeah, and having made their driver change too, they were they were best place of the GTD cars that had made the driver change in that car number 78. That advantage now is going to go away totally. They've got uh, a couple of laps round before they have to uh, come in and adhere to that. Shul Gunon at the back of the field at the moment in the number 79 after that drive through has not quite fallen. No, he hasn't fallen off the lead lap. He's coming okay. through to turn seven now. The leaders are going through into the left hander at turn three. And I call it the left-hander because that's what it's called. Uh, I haven't forgotten the name. Here's Spinelli in the pit lane already. I think that's sensible. Get it done. Get it out the way. You can't serve it if there's a full course yellow. So he will now drop to the back of the field. But again, hasn't lost a lap. Lost about, what, half a lap, I would say, in terms of real estate. Perhaps a little more in terms of time. But it's, it's, it's not race ending at the moment, Jeremy, for either of those two cars. Uh, yeah, true that. Um, you're right. Our Porsche keys to the race. Strategy. We're going to be talking about that a lot and we still don't know whose is right. And I expect strategy on the fly we'll be talking about. Penalties, well, there have been a couple so far. Those cars have dropped at the back of the grid. Traffic, well, we just started to see Pele in traffic when that yellow came out. He was into the back of the field at that point. And we have had some different tyre strategies as well. Some cars going with two, some cars going with four. 
and that is purely tactical because there are enough new Michelins behind the wall for people to put them on at each of the stops. What we've also had, which we sort of intimated in our Porsche Keys the race, is lots of close racing and Brendan Areeb doing a fine job at the moment in keeping some very good drivers behind him, Jeremy Shaw, as he comes down through turn seven. <laughs> yeah, indeed. How long can he keep that going? Because uh, he's got, got his mirrors absolutely full now. Directly behind him is, uh, well, was Trent Hinman. It's now uh, Julian Andlau who's got past Trent Hinman and he's going to go past uh, the move. McLaren on the inside of Big Bend as well. So good move there by Julian Andlau. Now, Brendan's got to keep his cool here. The red and white Porsche has gone through. The bright yellow one goes to the right-hand side. There was just a little tap there as Brendan was trying to get back on the racing line. Here comes Sebastian Prio as well. And tries to get down the inside. Can't make it. Catherine Legs on the end of that trail as well. Fastest lap of the GTD race is a 51.696. That's the fastest lap of the race. Full stop. And that is Laura Spinelli driving perhaps slightly annoyed because uh, of his drive through. My goodness me, 51.696 is faster than even Ross Gunn's time from earlier on in the race in the GTD Pro Car. No reason why that shouldn't be the case, Jeremy, but that no. shows you how much pace there is in that Lamborghini on new tyres. That's right, and you're, I'm going to take issue with that. He's not, he's not just a little bit uh, unhappy, he's very unhappy, <laughs> and he is charging harder. Yeah, I mean, you're right there, great point, because last year, Jules Gugnot was not running in pro, he was running in non-pro in a Mercedes, so the, uh, the lap record for the GTD cars, pro or non-pro, that was a 51.733, so that has now been bettered by uh, Loris Spinelli. Now, as things settle down after the restart, let's just recap what we've seen. We've had one intervention of the Honda safety car, and that was for a coming together between Alan Metney car now behind the wall, the number 91 Porsche, and Jared Andretti in the Aston Martin Vantage. Incident responsibility assessed uh, to that number 91 car. When it does, if it does come out from behind the wall, it will have to serve a, a stop wow. and go. So I think that was a pretty obvious one, but uh, race control have made sure that everybody's aware of that. During that pit stop, Ross Gunn, um, it seemed had got the tactics right, although the Vassa Sullivan guys turned their cars round the quickest, uh, their car round the quickest at the GDD Pro Field, uh, and got Jack Hoss Hosworth uh, across the line first. So Jack uh, did not pit during that yellow. He came in uh, earlier on, remember, after about no, half an hour. Um, and everybody else. No, he did come in. No, he did come in. Everybody came in on that second stop. Uh, it's GTT Pro, except, except for Ross Gunn. The, the, exactly. Sorry, I got them the wrong way around. Yeah. Uh, now, the interesting thing for me, Shea Adam, uh, is um, how many driver changes there have been, or should I say, how few in GTT Pro? <laughs> Yeah, only one. That's Klaus Bach, the guy who's never driven here before uh, yesterday because he was actually testing. He missed the track walk. So we talked to him a little bit earlier on, seven turns, but there's seven difficult turns. And uh, the only left-hander being the left-hander, that one is hard to figure out too. But so far, Klaus Bach, they're more than holding his own. Faf Motorsports started fifth. They're up to fourth. You said fascinating, Jeremy, about these different tactical interpretations of of what's going on and let's not uh, forget and we'll remind all of you watching and listening we still have an hour and three quarters to go in this race and that is one more pit stop uh, if we stay green all the way through so a minimum of one more pit stop for everybody out there and a heck of a lot of laps and fast racing to come as well Absolutely right. And uh, Julian Andlau, by the way, having got past uh, Trent Hinman, he just set a new fastest lap of the race overall, oh, wow. uh, 51.629 for that Curly Boss with Riley uh, Porsche, number 92. He's running in 12th position now, right behind Russell Ward, uh, and he's dragged Trent Hinman with him. Those two are, are absolutely no to tell just behind the Mercedes heading through the West Bend. Great battles. Great battles. The drivers all saying how much they look forward to these GT only competitions and events. We have one at VIR to come later on in the season. What a, another fantastic circuit with its undulations, natural terrain road circuits. 
and we'll have that for you in between now and then. It is Ruud Amaringa and uh, a full complement of IMSA racers there. Hearing from the team, and thank you to Kelly Moss, that the number 91 car has been now officially retired. That car has retired, as has uh, the Aston Martin, I believe. The number 94 of Andretti Autosport. And that was trailered back. But Gavi Chavez still hasn't driven that car yeah. in the race. Need to go in first next time around. Starting to see some drivers with a little bit of space making some time. Bill Oberlin's just put that car's fastest lap, that car being the Turner Motorsport 97. That's the blue and black BMW from Turner Motorsport, 52.3. Uh, and I saw somebody else as well last time around had just put their fastest lap in as well further down the field. Uh, so there is there is time and performance to be had out there. Ross Gunn stretching back out again, almost two seconds of a lead in that dark blue with the yellow stripes on that number 23 Aston Martin for Heart of Racing. Yeah, once again, he's stretching out his lead a little bit, isn't he? And I wonder whether Jack Hawks with here is kind of content to let him go. He doesn't want to take too much out of his own uh, Michelin tyres. Number 23, Aston Martin, of course, did not make a pit stop during this last round. Um, what, what did Shea say? What, what did the GTD... Did the GTD Procast just take on fuel only during that last uh, splash and stop? It was... Did anybody change tyres? Fuel and tyres. And tyres? Yeah. Did they? OK, well, that's really interesting. Um, because uh, the number 23 car there is on older tyres than everybody else, but again, he's pulling away out in front over two seconds now. Uh, the gap from the Aston Martin to Jack Hawksworth, who is clinging on ahead of Antonio Garcia. Now, I, I think I'm right, and Shea's listening in. So 31 laps at the moment since the leader in GTD Pro crossing the line now was in the pit lane. When they did that earlier stop, Shea, they did left-hand sides only on that car. Is that correct? On the For 23? the Aston Lexus, 23? they did Lexus. They did left sides. For the Aston, I think they did four the first no, no, time. No, no, the Lexus, and they have Lexus did all four for sure. On their first pit stop or on their second? On their sorry, second stop, one. they definitely just did left sides only. Right. No, they pitted okay. before the yellow, and then they pitted during the yellow, and during the yellow, they did left sides only. For okay, the Aston Martin, I think they did four yeah. tires on their first stop. Right. No, they didn't. Only they only stop. Uh, yes, it was the Mercedes that, uh, that took on two tires, wasn't it? Number 79 car. Yes, good uh, point. Took on left side tires only, uh, and I think everybody else took on four tires. That, so, yes, absolutely right. That makes that perf the performance at the moment and the pace of, of Ross Gunn even more impressive. 52.3 against the 52.5 of the second place car, 52.3, 52.1. Klaus Backler getting up to speed. That's that Porsche in fourth position, the satin yeah. black and plaid oh, he's car. Got past, he's got past Madison Snow, hasn't he? Yes, he has. And now he's trying Come to on. close in the three and a half seconds between himself and Antonio Garcia, who is at the moment the third place car overall and therefore third in GTD Pro as well. And he's coming. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He just said his best lap of the race, Klaus Backler, for 52.1 then uh, for that number nine car, which uh, showed good pace toward the end of his first stint. It was the last car uh, to come onto pit lane uh, and only did so when the caution came out. So uh, once again, that Porsche looking very good on its tyres. A couple of people looking at the timing and scoring, asking uh, about who's been in, who hasn't. Well, we've started to run through that. If you're looking, Gilles Gounon hasn't had three pit stops. He's had two pit stops and a drive-through penalty for leaving with pit lane equipment attached, of course. Uh, and who was the other one I saw? Oh, the 66, the gradient racing car. Uh, that car came in uh, early along with a number of other of the GTDs and came in again to change drivers. Catherine Legg now having uh, taken over that car from Sheena Monk. So uh, was, there was a, a couple of the, the GTD cars, I think, that came in early. Uh, Loris Spinelli also been down the pit lane twice. That was a drive-through penalty as well. 
that was for not adhering to fuel fill time. So just clearing up a couple of things there. I'll check back uh, with the... Oh, my goodness, drive-through penalty for Paul Miller Racing. This is contact with the number 32 of Mike Skeen. Now, that was seen by race control. Now, was that coming out of the pits or was that on the restart? No. It, it was ahead of him at the restart, so it must have been during the pit lane. Shea Adam watched the pit stops. The pit stops. Uh, there is a little bit of damage on the right front, but that was from earlier on when um, he was battling with a, another car. Um, contact on the on leaving the pits between those two cars, Shea? Yeah, I called that. Mike Skeen ran into the back of Madison, but there was no overlap between the two of them when they were rejoining the fast lane from the transition lane, so I'm a little befuddled by that penalty. Yeah, it's definitely 1 and 32. So Not safe release was it? Well, no, it's it, it says incident uh, one and thirty two. So that's contact. That that's not a pit lane violation. Yeah, but but, but I'm saying unsafe release coming out of the pit box. Uh, incident responsibility. Uh, initiating contact. Initiating contact. Uh, not seeing that at the moment on on the uh, on the pit lane ticker on the um, race control. If you're ahead, the only way you could be penalised was if if you'd pulled out and made somebody Correct, stopped. Saying. Yeah. Uh, let me see. It just says incident involving. Yeah. Um, and that was at 12 minutes past the hour, so that wasn't under the pits. An incident responsibility. It must be because they haven't been on together on the racetrack uh, at any time. Well, I don't think. Interesting. However, served and now starting to make that fight back. See if we can get some more information about that for you. Ross Gunn now pulled out to 2.2 seconds. Uh, he has now been out on the track 36 minutes, although of course, 36 laps, excuse me. Which is, uh, yeah. But there's a big chunk of yellow laps in the middle of that. There was 10 laps of yellow uh, in the middle of that. So when do we see? Started at 40 minutes past the hour, and we're just going past. 17, 16, 17 minutes past the hour. So he's got a ways to go yet, Jeremy. He's probably got another 15 minutes or so that he could go if uh, if that works works for them, and that'll that'll take them. Wow, I mean, he's up. Can he stretch it to somewhere close to the hour? Possibly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, it, that, that caution period uh, allowed them not. That's why they didn't come in. They, uh, they, they, they wanted to get in track position, uh, and they, they were sure with that full course caution they would be go able to go to the end with just one more stop. So that isn't the issue. Tire wear is the issue, and the Aston seems to be really, really good because he is uh, is still stretching that lead just a little bit up at 2.4 seconds yeah. now from first to second. And interestingly, also Roman De Angelis though in the other Aston Martin that's also leading in GTD now with that pit, with that penalty for the uh, number one car. Uh, he is dropping back from Klaus Bachler, uh, and uh, the, the, because the, the Aston Martin was running directly behind Madison Snow in the BMW, and then over the last uh, half a dozen laps, or seven or eight laps now since, Bachler got past the BMW and therefore just ahead of the, of the Aston Martin, he's pulled out of four seconds as Bachler over Roman De Angelis. Let's head down to the pit lane, and Mark Sorensen is with Shea. Marco, all of a sudden, both of the harder racing Aston Martins are in the lead of their respective classes. Your first time here at Lime Rock Park, are you feeling a little bit of butterflies? <laughs> For sure. Basically, every track I'm coming to this year, I'm, I'm having to learn. Uh, and it's a steep learning curve because obviously all the other drivers here are, are good drivers. Uh, so obviously getting up to speed is a, a crucial thing. Um, but I have to say, we almost got used to uh, used to learning these, all these new tracks. Um, and it seems like we're in for a decent result here. Yeah, good luck the rest of the way. Thank you.
getting some more information from uh, race control on that drive-through penalty and the incident involving the Paul Miller racing car and the court off number 32. Uh, uh, we'll get that for you as soon as we can. It appears that it was a pit lane violation, so we'll get the definitive call on that for you in a moment. In GTD, as you've heard there, Roman De Angelis now at the front of the field by two seconds. So the Astons very light on their feet at the moment. That's a car that's only stopped once as well. Turner Motorsport 96 in the blue and yellow. Tacos machine rather than Turner machine on the side of that car for this weekend. Sitting in second place as Madison Snow comes in off the back of the field. Uh, and is this a problem or is this just a standard pit stop shit, Adam? Strategy, 12 seconds worth of fuel. This is elongating Madison stint, meaning that when Brian gets in, we're gonna have to keep an eye for him to be able to complete minimum drive time. But Madison Snow rejoins ahead of Roman DeAngelis. So he is still on the lead lap for class, although he's behind all the GTD Pro leaders. Again, interesting strategy. They must have felt, Jeremy, they had nothing to lose after that drive through. So it'll be a full service when that car comes in and Madison will stay out as long as possible to give Brian his 45 minutes. Brian Sellers, his, his teammate, his 45 minutes uh, at the end of the race. Uh, and what they'll hope for is perhaps another full course yellow where they can cycle through some of the other cars. It's the only thing you can hope for at this point. Yeah, that's right, because it's going to be a long way back from there. Uh, talking of lap times, by the way, uh, Catherine Leg uh, has kind of latched onto that train of cars that's battling what is for now, what, to sort of fifth and sixth positions in GTD. Uh, Frankie Montecalvo is in fifth in kind of a 12. He's about a second ahead of Julie Landlauer, uh, who's... Uh, who, uh, and Russell Ward has fallen to the tray, uh, to the tail of that group. So not quite sure what happened to Russell Ward there in the last uh, lap or two, because all of a sudden he's lost a fair bit of ground. Didn't see what happened there. But Catherine Edgar, so it's a good lap time. She's now running up to, into ninth position in the class in that gradient racing accurate. It's kind of a 66. Meanwhile, out front, uh, 52 sevens, 52 sixes, 52 sevens is the uh, average lap time for the uh, race leading uh, Aston Martin. And uh, the gap uh, over to second position now for the first time over three seconds. I'm hugely impressed uh, with what Ross Gunn and indeed what in GTD Roman De Angelis is doing because he's not quite as far ahead, but he's doing a similar sort of thing. He's two seconds ahead, Ross Gunn 3.183 seconds ahead at the last count. Heart of Racing uh, really having hit their stride in the last three or four seasons. They've been around for a while. They know how to win championships. There is a huge amount of money for the Seattle Pediatric Cardiac Unit. Over $12 million at the last count. Heading to FIA WEC next year for a full season. They wanted a full season enemy this year. They couldn't get one because of the restrictions they're hoping for one next year but very clear in telling me when they were running at Le Mans where they'd taken over Paul Dallalana's entry in the FIWEC in Le Mans very clear when I was talking to Alex Riberas, uh, Alex Riberas that the um, that their home is here and that they will continue to race in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship that is our, anything else they do will be as an addition, not as a replacement. Um, getting a GT3 entry into um, WAC next year is going to be very tough indeed, um, particularly as we know that TF, uh, well, maybe for Aston Martin, uh, TF Sports stepping away, of course, they're going to run the uh, Corvettes in WAC, so maybe that's the thinking of... Uh, of part of racing probably only 14 cars 16 cars perhaps in the GT category next year and, uh, yet to find out 
who those manufacturers are and who the manufacturers nominate as their teams for that. Yeah. Meanwhile, he, here, uh, look at uh, this number nine, Faf Motorsports Porsche. He's closed right up, hasn't he, on that uh, battle for second position. Now, Jack Hawksworth, I think he's just uh, running his own pace right now, Jack Hawksworth. Doesn't want to take too much out of those tyres. Uh, as uh, I think it was Gar was it Garcia that ran a little bit wide. Yes, it was. Right behind him. Uh, and Klaus Backler right with those two as well. So that's a, a really fascinating battle. And that group in that pulled six seconds over the uh, heart of racing, the other heart of racing, Aston Martin, that's Roman De Andrews, who leads now by a couple of seconds over Patrick Gallagher and then Mike Skeen. But the guy who's on the move is Julian Andlauer, who set the fastest lap of the race overall in that number uh, 92 uh, Kelly Moss Porsche. Wow. And he's now up to fifth position wow. and only a second behind Bill Arbelin. He is flying in that number 92 car. Also going very quickly is uh, Loris Spinelli, who's now kind of stuck behind Russell Ward in the Wynn Ward uh, Mercedes. That's a battle for 10th and 11th. And Lau, fastest car on the track of anybody again last time around with a 52-4. Uh, and he is a second behind Bill Oberlin now. That, I mean, he's come through traffic with that as well, Jeremy. That's been yeah. impressive. It seems like only two minutes ago, uh, Lime Rock time compresses everything, uh, that he was he was battling, um, having come out of the pits, and he was trying to make positions, and he was, what, he was round about the, uh, the Trent Hinman, and, and he and Trent Hinman were sort of uh, round about the bottom end of the top ten. Um, he's fought his way, as you see, up to fifth position. That's very, very impressive indeed, as is what's going on at the front of the field. You've got to credit the whole organisation uh, of Heart of Racing. They work so very, very hard. They uh, had uh, help running the car at Le Mans. So what they did was they brought all of the principal members of their uh, engineering team from the IMSA Championship over to Le Mans as guests and let them enjoy the race from the other side of the fence. Um, I, I did find a certain irony in the fact that uh, all of the engineers uh, weren't that bothered about going to see the driver parade on Friday afternoon. What they wanted to do was walk down the pit lane and see all the cars, all the other cars in the categories, which I thought, come on guys, you're supposed to be off work now. No, no, we want to see the engineering. That's what we're going to do. Yes, that was quite funny, but a lovely touch from Heart of Racing because quite clearly anybody who works in at motorsport, uh, there is uh, a huge investment in time uh, and effort uh, and that time sometimes is to the detriment of everything that you have at home. So the other halves as well of the teams uh, also getting invitations and getting to see the 100th anniversary running of Le Mans, which I thought was pretty classy, if I'm honest, from Heart of Racing. Yeah, really good. But again, it shows the professionalism, as you say, of the engineers on that team. Uh, they want to learn. They want to learn as much as they can. Totally. Uh, and just by walking up and down the pit lane, you can learn a lot, certainly about preparation for, for, for next year. But, uh, God, this is a fascinating battle we're seeing right at the moment. Uh, Roscoe continuing to stretch through the moment. We didn't see this pace out of the Aston Martin during the two practice sessions yesterday. It was only during that final, quali uh, the, the, the short qualifying session that Roscoe really stepped up. And he told Shea Adam at the top of the show that uh, he thought he was, he was going to be marginal on tyre wear. Not the case at all. He stretched that lead. Now it's four seconds over that battle for second, third, and fourth position. But he has got that, uh, that Madison snow car directly ahead of him on the racetrack, hasn't he? Uh, yes, he has. They're coming down the front straight now. And so, yeah, all right. So it was an unsafe release. Well, pr yeah, pit lane protocol is what I've been told. Well, that doesn't tell yeah, me an awful it, lot. Unfortunately, it doesn't say that on on the uh, on the race channel. Um, Team Kortloff actually got mugged um, by the uh, by the number 12 Lexus as well. Uh, normally, if it's something in the pit lane, it says pit incident, or it would have said in, in on safe release. It just said incident and incident it responsibility, did. which tends to normally suggests it's something that happens on the track. Now, I accept that there's only certain things that you can put on the uh, on the timing monitors and the race control uh, text feed, 
the team did tweet out that it was a pit lane infraction, no more yeah. than that. But great work by our replay team up in Charlotte. Once again, gave us the shot. And effectively it was, as you correctly su surmised, Jeremy, an unsafe release. Yeah. I, 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 got a, I got a text from Nate Stevens. Thank you, Nate, who's the communications director at IMSA. He said uh, uh, pit lane protocol is what he described it. And I sent him a text back saying, was that, is that unsafe release? Uh, and he wasn't able to answer that question. So uh, that's an assumption that that's what it was. But uh, pit, lane, pit lane protocol no, no, is it what was. he was told. It absolutely yeah. was. We've just seen the, the, the video of it. So um, no doubt in my mind that, that that's what it was. They pulled out and forced the caught off car to to stop almost uh, stalled and there was contact left rear of the Paul Miller racing car to front right of the caught off car now, normally anybody who's behind and makes contact it's almost always the person behind's fault unless of course the person in front has pulled into your space which is what effectively had happened there they were desperate to get Madison out they're working their own strategy now and trying to keep Madison out for probably uh, another 35 minutes or so. And his lap times at the moment uh, is 50, what is, where is he he's doing? 53.2. So that's a little bit quicker than the cars at the, the front of GTD. Uh, um, except for the leader. Uh, the leader's been doing 53.0, 52.8. Uh, he hasn't done any 53s uh, for a while. Well, uh, De Angelis did a 53-3 last time around. So, uh, oh, De Angelis, I'm sorry. I yeah. think, so, uh, leader in oh, class, okay. I said, Jeremy. Big um, part, big part. Yeah. Ross Gunn, you're right, he's catching him. The leader overall, in some ways, that doesn't matter to, to Paul Miller Racing, even if Ross Gunn comes through. Um, because, I mean, I, I still think this is awesome, by the way, from, from Ross, and that whoever set that Aston Martin up, um, has, has Ross also been taking advice from Shane Van Giesbergen, the tyre whisperer? Uh, Madison as well, actually, because those tyres on Madison's car must be pretty old as well, because he just did fuel at the last stop. So proving, Jeremy, in, in some ways, our worry about tyre degradation, it, it does seem as though once that initial performance drop-off has happened, the Michelins really plateau, and if you take care of them, they are giving giving fairly consistent pace, even on the long run. That's pretty impressive. Uh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, uh, the uh, the Porsche is certainly looking really, really good on their on their tyres. Just look at the gap from uh, Madison uh, back to the car ahead of him on the road, which is which is Brendan Ereeb in the Inception Racing McLaren. Uh, Showing us 27 seconds, yeah. yeah, which has actually gone out a bit uh, uh, from uh, after the pit stop. But um, what I was going to say there was the other guy that's doing a really good pace at the moment is Trent Hinman in that number one, uh, number 77, uh, right most sports Porsche. Uh, as I say that, by the way, Julian Anna has just got past Bill Arbelin, oh. so he's put a bit of distance between himself and the, uh, that Volt car of uh, Trent Hinman is now right with Bill Arbelin. Only activity on the pit lane, as reported to me by Shea Adam, is at the heart of racing number 23 pit. But that will be precautionary. At the moment, they are driving away nearly five seconds now from the field. Jack Hawksworth, yeah. I think your summation of what Jack Hawksworth's doing in that yellow and black number 14, that's the car with the green number backgrounds, uh, so, sorry, red number backgrounds, wing end plates, etc. I think that's he's been asked to drive to a pace, and he's doing that because his lap times are super consistent. And in fairness, Antonio Garcia, almost tied to him with a, a, a half a second long bungee cord, hasn't looked like he's making any kind of effort to overtake, and neither is Klaus Backler, who's sitting in behind the Corvette in the Faf Porsche. Shay Adam has been watching this. Think about what Ben Bardick had told us on the grid in the Michelin countdown to green, John. We are racing the people behind us. We need to keep them behind us. They are not fighting the heart of racing today. They are trying to extend their points lead, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. That's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. Plus, 
the, the Aston, of course, its next stop is going to be uh, it's going to be a longer stop than everybody else, and probably by five seconds, because it will need more fuel. It uh, it has only made one pit stop so far uh, during this race, uh, so we'll stay up probably another yeah, almost 15 minutes, I would yeah. think, before uh, we see the Aston Martin onto the uh, the pit lane. Uh, but uh, Jack Hawks is just managing himself perfectly at the moment, and you know, making sure that he's got good tyres for the end of this race as well. One more stop for pretty much everybody uh, in this race. Now, what I'm interested to see then, Jeremy, at the hour mark is once Ross Gunn... I'll, I'll, use, I'll use a phrase that uh, seldom actually plays out. All of the things being equal, which they seldom are. I can hear Paul Truswell saying that in my ear. Yes, but they seldom are, John. But if they are, then it should be Ross Gunn of the leading GTD broadcast who comes in in around about 15 minutes time so yeah. just under 20 laps or thereabouts now at that point everybody else surely has to be triggered to come in as well or do they risk going further into the race as their uh, fuel load can allow them to do well, look, uh, I think the, the Lexus now has hit, hit the wall in terms of its tyres. It's losing now. The last three laps in a row, it's lost four tenths of a second to that leading Aston Martin. 53-3 uh, last uh, couple of laps for Jack Hawksworth. 52-9 for our race leader, Ross Gunn, and Aston Martin. So Jack Hawksworth is, is struggling a little bit at this stage in the race. Well, and this, that's terrible news for them because, they, they, I mean, even if they do make an early stop, it can't be now they would have to splash again before the end right. so they've got to make another 14 minutes uh, and now i wonder if this will trigger garcia in the corvette and or klaus backler oh and a big moment for garcia coming out of turn seven last time around kicks up the dirt on the exit with his left hand side michelins i wonder if they now have realized that they might have to make a pass here jeremy and Championships being championship, how hard does Hawksworth fight at this stage if Garcia, or indeed Backler, does try to put a move on him? Yeah, this is really interesting, isn't it? <laughs> and, um, yeah, fascinating motorists uh, unfolding here. By the way, uh, Madison Snow, he has lost... Uh, the, the lead lap, hasn't he? He's been overtaken by the uh, race leading Aston, overall race leading Aston Correct. Martin, but he's still on the lead lap in the class, so Correct. nothing to worry about uh, yet, certainly. Uh, but uh, super consistent lap times here for a recent. Here it is, 52-9 again. The last three laps oh, within pitting. thousands of a second. Wow. Pitting, and it's Hawksworth and Garcia that come into the pit lane. And by the way, to go. Madison uh, is just ahead of the 27 of Roman to Angela as they go past. Shea Adam is watching the GTD broadcast in the lane. I'm going to give Lexus the trophy for best poker players because they were sitting casually on the wall the last time that the 12, uh, 14 Lexus went by. But now, driver change has been completed. Ben Bardikin is behind the wheel. Jack Hawksworth has done four new tires for the Lexus, four new tires, and Jordan Taylor for the Corvette. As waiting on the fuel for both of those cars into the pit lane comes the number 12 Lexus. This will not impede the sister car because the 14 is pitted further out. Jordan revving the engine. But it's the Lexus that moves first. Ben Bardikin out on the racetrack. There goes Jordan. He did not do the delicate thing that we saw Antonio doing yesterday. No, those Michelins have a lot of speed. And into the pit lane is our race leader, or was the race leader, the number oh. 23 heart of racing, Aston Martin. Fuel, tires, and Alex Ribeiras for this one. And it's for And out the big Ben, Shea. Very important, the big Ben. We've got the fat Porsche going around the outside of the Corvette and putting a lap on the Corvette as the race leader comes in. So Faf have stayed out and Backler puts a lap on on the Corvette of Jordan Taylor. Meantime, Harder Racing 23 has come in. They can't surely get to the end from here, Jim. Oh, they think they can. They got this car, well, not this exact car, but the car in GTD a couple of years ago and 110 minutes on a tank of fuel here at Lime Rock. That was when it was Max Martin and Roman DeAngelis. That would have been last year, actually. They brought the car home in second. But now the pit board waves for the FAF Porsche. So they will be coming in this lap around, meaning that we will have had three out of the five GTD Pro cars. And in is Klaus Backler as we wait.
for the 27 Heart of Racing Aston Martin to come in as well. Max is, uh, uh, excuse me, Marcus Sorensen is up on the wall, so Roman DeAngelis is about to get out. I was supposed to say Max DeAngelis is going to get out, but Dad is not driving today. They are doing left side tires on the FAF Porsche and right side tires as well. So they are doing that full service stop as out jump Roman. In goes Marco. Four tires for Heart of Racing Aston Martin, number 27 as well. And up on the wall, finally, the number 79 WeatherTech Racing Mercedes. That is the last of our GTD Pro cars to stop. That will be fuel tires and Danny Jukade have taken over. Can't wait to hear from some of those drivers, particularly Ross Gunn. Now that he's out of the car, we'll let him curl down before Shea Adam goes and has a chat. Well, this is absolutely intriguing. Out the car that was in the lead, Marco Sorensen now behind the wheel of Heart Racing. So GTD now led by Turner and Patrick Gallagher, who is yet to make uh, his second stop. Mike Skeen, the pool sitter and team call, have been in there since the start. He's gone through into second. And Lauer into third. Very quick car, that. Then Bill Oberlin for Turner. Then Trent Hinman for Wright Motorsports and the Porsche. In GTD Pro, Jules Gounon, off strategy, is leading the GTDs. Uh, the GTD Pros, excuse me, in eighth position from Klaus Backler. Let's see where they came out of the pit lane. Uh, actually, no, it's the 23 car that's gone through. Alex Riberas and Ben Barnicott and then Klaus Backler and then Jordan Taylor, second, third and fourth. Let's hear about that super long stint and where the tactical thinking was coming from, from Harder Racing and the number 23 car. Let's hear from Ross Gunn. Ross, we're going to have to start calling you the tyre whisperer. You were worried about tyre wear before the race began, but somehow you managed to keep the Michelins under you. What was it that made that strategy work? To be honest, I'm not really sure. It surpassed my expectations in terms of uh, tyre dicks. So that was really good. I think the car was just in a sweet spot. And when you have a car that's got a good balance and you have lots of confidence and you can just under drive without losing too much time, it's a joy to drive. So. Yeah, really happy with that. We were, I was a bit worried that maybe we didn't make the most of the opportunity to pit under the yellow like everybody else. But in a way, I think it was actually the right decision because it gave us track position back after losing the position at the first stop. Um, but yeah, just make it really happy. How much longer could you have stayed out out there on fuel? Because you guys had the pace and the track position. Yeah, quite a lot longer, but obviously with just over an hour to go, you have to cover yourself for undercuts from the other cars. Um, and also we can get to the end now, so you have to be, be safe in terms of that. But also, if there's a yellow that comes about and everybody else is pitted, stuff. So, yeah, we, we, we made the, the right call. Great job out there. Thank you, thank you. Extraordinary stuff there, Jeremy Shaw. And he answered the question that we wanted to uh, answering. They can go to the end, so they believe 70 minutes is doable here for all of those GTDs and the pro cars that came in. Now, Jules Gounon has to hope that uh, he can pull a gap. What was amazing to me, Jeremy, is how quickly they turned round that Aston Martin. It would have needed uh, a tad more fuel because they were much further through their fuel burn and they've still come out ahead of the other GTD Pro cars which with, with which they were battling before that pit stop. Brilliant stuff. Uh, not only that, uh, but uh, Alex Ribras has just set uh, the fastest lap of the race in GTD Pro as well in that number 23 Aston Martin, 51.725. Uh, so he's pulled out four tenths of a second over Ben Barnick and the, the, uh, the Lexus was a good bit closer when they came out of the pits, but it's uh, that lead is stretching out again between the Aston Martin and the uh, and the Lexus in second position. Uh, the big loser in that round of pit stops was a Corvette that came out uh, quite a long way behind uh, all of the other contenders. Uh, got yes. some work to do. Yes, you are absolutely right. Uh, Catherine Legg was in and out for Gradient as well, so presumably that'll be there. Last pit stop, uh, and pretty much everybody uh, other than Gilles Gounon in... Well, if I, uh, Jill Gunon is the only GTD Pro car that has not done his last stop yet. Mike Skeen still hasn't done his, neither has Bill Oberlin, and neither has Seb Prio. They've all been in from the start as Gunon goes through. Spinelli's back in, 
for his final stop in the Lamborghini and the Mercedes AMG, the red, white and blue, uh, sorry, the dark blue uh, and black Winward racing car is in the pit lane, the number 57. Russell Ward did have a little off-track moment uh, earlier on, but uh, continued to turn four from memory. Stall from the number 78 Lamborghini, refired and gone, cost no more than two seconds. And that car leaves the pit lane with uh, the Windward AMG in behind it. And here comes the overall and GT race leader, Mike Skeed, who's been in for an hour and 34 minutes. Finally comes to say hello to you, Shea. That's about time. He's been standing me up for quite some time now, John, as new sticker tires are going on for Mikhail Granier, the Canadian, getting to race here at Lime Rock Park, I think, for the first time. He might have done it in open wheel. That would have been a very long time ago. Waiting on the fuel as the right rear tire is the last one to go on. This was a four-tire stop, and the driver change has not gone smoothly. Mikhail still trying to get his belt done up. Two windshield tear-offs for this Mercedes. The first one didn't come off cleanly, so they grabbed another one. Good thing they had that. Fuel nozzle is out, and away goes the Mercedes. That was a very slick stop. Right behind me, one pit box further up, is the Inception Racing McLaren. They are due in here at any moment now, as minimum time has been met for Brendan Arif, and it will be the starting driver, Frederick North, taking over that car to take it to the checkered flag. I've never seen, never seen so many different a combinations of what's going on in the pits here, Jeremy. This is working out brilliantly. And um, we might as well throw a dart at a dartboard for our BDO Nose Strategy Award at the moment. Battling out on the track as people coming out the track on cool tire. Here we go with the blue and yellow number 96 BMW of Robbie Forley. And he's got the rejoining caught off car right in front of him, Catherine Legs there as well as she's trying to move up, maybe pick up the pieces. Down towards the final corner, and the number 32 AMG defending to the inside. Grenier will be slow off the final corner. Here comes the BMW, but that AMG is quick in a straight line. And Catherine Leg cannot steer with them. That hasn't got the top speed, that NSX, even with a double draft in front of her into the big bend, the first corner, and... The BMW goes through under braking. Grenier is still getting heat into his uh, tyres. And there's been a big off at the final corner. An hour and four minutes to go. And the pits are closed. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. And that is the 70. That is the McLaren that has gone off at the final corner. And it's come wow. to the inside. So left-hand Michelin's on the dirt on the dirt and then actually that's brendan i thought that was an outlap that's brendan Arabi. he was on yeah. his way he, in that lap yeah yeah and he was right ahead of the race leader I'm not sure whether the race leader had got past him beforehand uh because um uh, he on the previous lap he was right ahead of the of the uh erstwhile race leader jack hawks with the lexus was a couple of seconds behind was one of those wow. two gtd pro cars involved there somehow he is out uh, of his uh, own accord, Brendan. And, oh, I think there was a touch. Well, uh, there that's, might that's have been a I touch there. There was a yeah. little puff of smoke uh, as the uh, leading, uh, as the um, uh, Lexus was up behind him. Um, well, that would have been the Bar Ben Barnegat car. That's yeah, good. because, well, I mean, the, the, the McLaren would have slowed coming off that corner if he didn't give the signal uh, so, to some way that he was having to slow, uh, slow down coming out of the uh, of the downhill turn. That is, uh, could well be what, have hap what happened there. I don't know. Well, there was just... It's always a tricky pit entrance, John, isn't it? It, it is, because you can't slow down on the inside because you're right on the racing line. EMR safety crew there already. This is our second intervention of the... Honda safety car has a very, very big hit, but these GT3 cars are very well built and uh, maybe uh, the uh, not quite as sophisticated in some ways as the GTEs we used to race, but there's no, um, nothing skimped on safety. It is a, a global category, of course. It's gonna be a big clean up this, because we've got to rearrange the tires, which are 
placed in front of the steel barriers there. So, Bill Oberlin leads the motor yeah. race, but has not made is. his stop. <laughs> He's been out there 59 laps. Nobody else needs to come to pit lane. As he is going very slowly indeed to pick up the safety car. And goes past the scene of the accident. So Brendan out of the car, that's the most important thing. We'll leave race control to pick the bones out of what happened there. Um, it's going to be a tough one to decipher. Contact, I believe, to the left rear of that McLaren by the right front of Ben Barnica to Fassa Sullivan. Or, or Ben locked up in trying to avoid him. And that could have been another thing. That could have just been a puff of smoke as he was trying to avoid him. And just before that happened, Robbie Forley getting by the court of car of Mikel Grenier who was out of the pits on cold tyres. Catherine Legg involved in that as well but unable to take advantage of mm. what was going on ahead of her. Just on the hour mark very now, defensive. Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> Grenier, they'd be very, very defensive. By the way, has raced here before in Formula BMW back in 2008, along with Danny Junkadela uh, that, uh, that weekend. And uh, yeah, super defensive there, trying to keep that uh, turn of BMW behind him. Pits are open and Bill Oberlin Straight comes. Straight line speed of the BMW, wow. Pits are open and uh, the GTD car being the leader gets to come in first yeah. and Bill Orbel and then Shea Adam for the final stop for this car. And this is a driver change because Chandler Hull has yet to play for Turner Motorsports in the number 97 Turner Motorsport BMW and now he is getting his opportunity with four new Michelin tires so clearly they like Chandler quite a bit. Fueling is done, quick claim to the grill and Chandler launches back into life. Let's see, yep, green light is on at the pit exit. No issues for the 97. Tell you what, Jeremy, we're going to get underway here with the sharp end of 50 minutes to go, um, possibly a little bit more, possibly a little bit less. On the basis of what we've seen in the first part of this race, you've got, you've got to say it's advantage Aston Martin on the way that yeah. they can get performance at the end of their tyre life. Uh, they, they had, a, 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 and Ross Gunn said it to Shea, uh, it was a good question by Shea. Did you have to come in? No, we had loads loads of fuel, but we know we can get the end. And he was still making time on the cars behind him at that point. Uh, yeah, sort of. The the number nine car was definitely the best on its size. Uh, yeah. Once it once the, the the Aston peeled off, which was covering the other two, uh, that the, the number 14 and number three, they were the first to blink. They were the first to come onto pit lane. If there had been a caution after that, then as was the case with the turn of most what BMW car number 96, and it hadn't made its pit stop, then the pits are closed. When he has to make his stop, he's now going to fall all the way from the first in class, almost to last, although um, I think there's a couple of cars a lap down now, but uh, that's really bad luck for the turn of most what car of Bill Oblin and Chandler Hull. But uh, the, the Porsche, having got clean air once the 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 uh, Lexus and the uh, Corvette and then the Aston came into pit lane. He was doing he did a couple of 52 sevens, which was about three tenths quicker than the uh, Mercedes was. So mm. it's a fast car that Porsche, uh, and it looks after its tires really really well. The bad news is he's got to get past first Ben Barnicut and then Alex Ribras if he's got any chance of winning this race. Meanwhile, in GTD non-pro, Julian Ondlauer is in second position now behind Marco Sorensen in the harder racing team Aston Martin and right behind Julian is uh, Trent Hidman as well who's also turned some very very good lap times. His best lap in a race is a 51.8 in that Porsche, in the uh, 77 Porsche. Uh, Julian Ondlauer's fastest lap of the race uh, overall and GTD 51.629 so a couple of tenths he got in hand at uh, the best lap, but Trent Hidman was running some really, really good laps in that vault racing number 77. 
Well, uh, you live by the uh, you live by the full course yellow. Sometimes you get crushed by it, and that wasn't what Turner Motorsport had wanted to see uh, with Chandler Hull and Bill Oberlin's car, the blue livery on the 97. The Inception McLaren has been moved onto the it hasn't actually it has been moved out of the tyre wall and the tyre barrier and the steel barrier behind it have been inspected and the tyre barrier uh, which obviously guards the steel rail itself that is already being put back into position thank goodness yeah. that was there uh, and by the way, John, uh, with the when the caution came out, the number 80, number 57, and the number one were, were a lap down to the overall leader, which was uh, Bill Oberlin. But when Bill made his pit stop, because uh, they're running in the same class, he was a, they were a lap behind. But when he made his pit stop, they got back on the lead lap in GTD and have just got the wave around. So they are uh, moving their way now to the back of the field. So we will have all the cars r r running in this race, 17 of them on the lead lap when we get back uh, wow. to the uh, to green flag racing and with all pit stops having been completed it is uh, a run to the checkered flag so don't count out brian sellers he's going to be the last of the runners in that number one paul miller racing car now he's back on the lead lap expect him to try and move forward. I'll say the same for Phil Ellis in the Wimbledon Racing Mercedes and Seb Prio in the bright green AO Porsche, Lexi, the number 80 car. Chandler Hull will be wound up. He hasn't been in the car yet, so he's really ready to go. And he thought he might have been taking over a car at the real sharp end of the field there. And he's going to have to come from ninth now in that turn of motorsport number 97, the Macintosh car. Yeah, that's uh, really bad luck for Chandler. He's going to be. Uh hard pressed to, to hold on to a top 10 finish here that's for sure in gtd uh, i tell you what you're super impressed by the pace of the porsches in particular they look really really strong uh, this weekend they've had uh, they had a, a bounce performance break prior to canadian timers what part they've got a larger engine restrictor which uh, helped there here the cars are they handle well around here they always have done uh, and they've got a weight to break as well they've got 20 kilos taken off the porsches compared to last time out north of the border and uh, all those factors together plus the fact it looks after its tires really well the porsche is looking really really strong here and julian andler having had uh, a, a couple of third place finishes already this season in a number 92 car along with alec udell they are really well placed now. Just got Marco Sorensen ahead of them. Right. But they do have Trent Hinman right behind. And Trent, uh, he was the, the, the qualified lap record holder here, don't forget, in GTD prior to this weekend. The lap he set in the Acura back in 2019. Had success here before. He's another guy who considers this his home track. Yeah. He's from, from New Jersey, so not a million miles away. And he, Trent Hinman will have a lot of support here as well. Let's have a VP racing in race update then before we go back to green. There's still a bit of work to go on on drivers right on the inside of the track. Exit of turn seven, the final, the downhill corner at Lime Rock Park. Alec Alex Riberas now leads for Hart, a racing team. We're all behind the safety car, so I won't bother giving you any gaps because it's pointless. So 23 Aston Martin. Dark blue with the yellow flashes ahead of the yellow and black Vassa Sullivan number 14. Lexus in second. The Porsche of FAF Motorsports is the plaid, but mainly a sort of a satin black now, the number nine car. That's the drive, uh, driveway sponsored machine. Then the all yellow Corvette of Jordan Tiller uh, with the number three car. Those are the top four. They're all GTD Pro. The other GTD Pro is the Daniel Junkadea WeatherTech Racing Mercedes AMG, the 79 car, and that is 13th in line. By the way, the pits have opened for GTD Pro. No takers uh, on that. So they have lined up at the front of the field. That is not the fact that this field split. That is uh, how they were lined up out of the pits. Uh, Marco Sorensen and Harter Racing, their second Aston Martin. This one with the green accents uh, on the wing end plates and the door mirrors, etc. That's the 27 car. Leeds GTD. 
This is the part of the race, however, where we kind of stop thinking about that and just watch the relative performance of all of the cars. Julian Andlauer in that very fast Porsche, the number 92 car, the red and white car um, from Kelly Moss with Riley, is uh, next up. So sixth overall, second in class. Then Trent Hinman for Wright Motorsport. That's another Porsche. The 77 car is the bright Volt Lightning colour car. Can't miss that Can't one. Can't miss that. <laughs> no. Put your sunglasses on. Uh, Vassa Sullivan's second Lexus. Again, this is the GTD car, so it has the green accents uh, and door numbers on it. That sits in fourth in GTD, eighth overall. And the top ten... Uh, made up by Robbie Foley for Turner Motorsports in the Tacos car, the blue and yellow 96 car, and Mikel Grenier for Team Court of Motorsport, number 32. That's the uh, dark sort of grey-blue coloured AMG. We'll keep on going, because we're not going back to green anytime soon, although the Inception car is now behind the wall and going back to the paddock. Uh, Catherine Legg, 7th in GTD, 11th overall in the 66. JG went with white and green gradient racing Acura NSX the Lamborghini Loris Spinelli up and down dear for them the 78 car is next up in 12th position then that sort of interloper in the GTD ranks Daniel Hooker there for WeatherTech Racing the white cars with the red and blue accents the 79 then it's Chandler Hull for the blue Turner Motorsport BMW. He's in ninth in class, 14th overall. That's the 97. Seb Prior has another very noticeable car. That's the bright green T-Rex, uh, affectionately known as Rexy for AO Racing. Uh, that's the number 80 car. Then Phil Ellis for Winwood Racing, the 57 AMG. And Brian Sellers for the white, black and red number one. BMW. Uh, those are the 17 runners and they will restart all on the lead lap with the front four being those GTD Pro cars. Just coming down to 49 minutes to go. Beautiful afternoon and that's your uh, VP Racing in race update. Now all of the circuit vehicles have cleared away from the turn seven so the fantastic crowd that we have here, who are always knowledgeable, old school circuits, sitting on the banks in their lawn chairs. Good afternoon to you all from a slightly overcast, windy and wet UK. Good to see that you have uh, come to watch the motor racing. So this is it, Jeremy. We really now have, if you like, about a 45, 46 minute sprint. The tactics now, are all done and dusted so we'll now have to look at other things for our BDO nose strategy award strictly speaking now that the gold Acura uh, safety car is pulling away from the field this should be a straight out fight shouldn't it yeah, one more thing for the drivers to do now, cinch down those belts just a little <laughs> bit tighter. Uh, for you there watching at the side of the racetrack I, I suggest the same because this should be fun Single file restart and Alex Riberas pulls away and jumps and only Ben Barnicut goes with him as the green flag is waved. They're weaving left and right down the front straight to clean off the Michelin tyres. 48 minutes almost on the nose and the top four, the GTD Pro Cars, have eased ahead of Marco Sorensen for the Heart of Racing team. I wonder if there was a little bit of uh, inter-team working out and strategizing there at the restart because Sorensen left a little bit of a gap there so he had something to drive into it's a great restart uh, further back down the field uh, as Catherine Leg was battling away in the Acura uh, sitting in behind Mikael Grenier but she's got Daniel Hunkadella for WeatherTech in behind now that's not a same class car so I wonder if Catherine might let that car go through and then use the gap in the air that that AMG is making down the front straight in particular to help her move forward. That NSX looks really good through the twisty bits, Jeremy, but it hasn't had the pace down the straights today. Not quite, has it? But uh, she's said some yeah, respectable lap times. Her best lap uh, in this race before Catherine's a 52.2, which is on par with a whole bunch of other cars, including, for example, Robbie Foley in the BMW 96 that uh, was running up front uh, for quite a long time in GTD. So, you know, Catherine's got... Uh, uh, she's got a work cut out here, but she's still in a good position now, running eighth in that gradient racing Acura. She made good progress. Now, still waiting for Klaus Backler 
to make his final stop, of course. That's the only car that needs fuel before the end of the plan. No, no, no. Everybody's good to go for fuel, John. Uh, when did... Uh, when, when came did on lap 95. 95. Oh, OK. Lap 95. OK, yeah, yeah. sorry, that's not showing on my screen. Uh, I've got him um, not having stopped since uh, the previous time. He's still only made two pit stops, though. Yep. Right, OK. Well, OK, so he can go to the end. My apologies. Thank you, Jeremy. And that means we have got a proper race between those four cars at the front. And then the GTD cars following in behind. Timing. Uh, not showing that. Showing him as uh, being on 70 laps at the moment with two big lumps of yellow. So my apologies for that. Came at lap 95. I think, I think I should make a note of that. So, oh, no. Alex uh, has jumped away to a one-second lead. This is ominous for the rest of the cars behind. Marco Sorensen not quite able to do the same thing. He's only got three-tenths of a second in the second of the heart of racing team. Aston Martin's currently sitting at the head of his category and staring at the back of the Corvette. Now, how close does Sorensen want to get to the back of that Corvette? These cars are... I mean, they're not as aero-dependent as a Formula car, Jeremy, but they certainly do have aero, and you will you'll will use your front tyres more if you're sitting in the disturbed air of the car ahead of you. So this is a, a delicate balancing act for Sorensen, sitting in overall fifth and leading GTD. Yeah, you know, it's, it's absolutely fascinating right now, isn't it? Because he's got that Porsche uh, right behind him as well. So, you know, this is... Uh, gloves off are off right now. Uh, it's going to be awfully difficult to make a pass because these cars are, generally speaking, pretty pretty closely matched. But uh, I think you know, once the tyre wear uh, becomes more of a factor, that's when it's going to, to come on hand. Let's look at, look at replay of the pits. I wonder what happened to number three Corvette. There was a problem with that stop, uh, and it was a lot longer than everybody else. But now he's uh, back in, you know, in the fight in fourth position and pretty much nose to tail with the others. Looks like he was struggling to get uh, a gear and get that car out of neutral and into first gear when the work was done. The, uh, the right index finger was clicking away at the paddle on the right hand side of his steering wheel and clearly nothing was happening to allow Jordan Taylor to pull out of the pit lane. So a little bit of frustration there, but fortunately, it's cost them not very much because, of course, uh, they are still in fourth position after that yellow flag. Everything has closed back up together again, and they're still only two and a half seconds away from the lead. A little bit less than that, actually. Quickest lap of the race for the FAF Porsche for that car, 52.1. Klaus Backler showing his intent and closing in on Ben Barnicott, there's a tiny little bit of damage on the right front of that car, and it's dislodged the front wing around the headlight and over the top of the right front wheel. Now, those pieces, part of the changes of the new 992 GE3 car, those pieces have far fewer fixings and are made to be able to take off and put back on really easily. Well, there's been a bit of a bang there somewhere, and... It looks like one of the clips has come away to the inside part of that, around about where the bonnet uh, is. The outside clip, which is an, um, a, one of those over clips that you then pull down and fasten down, that seems to be holding on. But race control will be looking at that, Jeremy, because that would be a sizable piece of bodywork if that was shed onto the track. They won't want that on the racing surface. No. Now, that's certainly something that we'll keep an eye on there. And here's this battle for the Porsches, just a little bit farther back, uh, behind uh, the uh, GTD leading Aston Martin or Marcus Sorensen. The, the, uh, the Dane there just about hanging on ahead of uh, Julian Andlar with Trent Hyman right there in that bright yellow vault, uh, Wright Motorsports Porsche as well. Kelly Moss uh, and, uh, and Wright, the two of the leading teams in Porsches in one weight racing, certainly for many, many years now. And here they are battling Effectively for the lead, and it's just right behind the harder racing Aston Martin. It's a great battle unfolding. Mark Will Sorensen still on the wall. The right motorsport crew talking to Trent Hinman at the moment. And the IMSA tech officials have walked out to the pit wall to have a look at Klaus Backler 
and to have a look at the 77 as well, I'm hearing. And that's why the vault guys are up on the wall at the moment. So not sure what they've seen on that car. Trent at the moment running in third in GTD, got another Porsche ahead of him, the red and white. Kelly Moss Riley car, it's a good run for them. Podium position at the moment in behind Sorensen's Aston Martin. Can't see anything obvious on the 77. The bright yellow machine. Certainly nothing missing. Doesn't seem to be, does there? A little bit of a shake on the rear wing as it comes down the front straight, but I can't see. The, the, the right car looks absolutely fine. I can't say the same about the number nine, Faf. Car with the plaid accents on it. So that's something we'll have to keep an eye on as well. This battle for GTD. Top three absolutely together. And then just a little gap to Robbie Foley. About a second and a half in the turn of BMW. Nobody should have any yeah. fuel issues after all of that yellow. I, I, I just wonder how much tyre save is going on right now. We, we saw some drop off in performance as we would expect. But we know the early laps at speed, Jeremy, are absolutely crucial in getting performance throughout the whole stint on these tyres. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to uh, Aaron Tielitz in the second of the Lexus is because he was running uh, right in fourth position uh, ahead of Robbie Foley. Into the Fo pits. Foley has made that pass. OK, here he comes now. So that is unexpected. So that is an unscheduled pit stop. Shea Adam is watching the car coming to a halt. Answer, radiator full of grass. He must have gotten off the track somewhere and he needed uh, okay. to come in because the car was overheating. They are pulling out gobs of grass, not putting any fuel, not doing any other service. That's it. Wow, and he's dropped all the way to the tail end of the field. Uh, he Brian... lost half a dozen positions, excuse me, John. He lost half a dozen positions, that whole train of cars with Robbie Foley, then at number 32 cars, 78, 66 and 79 had all got past him. Uh, and that uh, I also should mention that Paul Miller Racing's Brian Sellers has dealt with Phil Ellis in the Wimwood Racing car, so he's up yeah. a position as well. Yeah, did that at the restart. Always a good opportunity. Alex Riberas still one and a half seconds ahead of Ben Barnicat. The closest battle is the battle for the top three in GTD. It's for fifth, sixth and seventh overall. Sorensen. Easing his way into this race, only got in at the pit stop, remember. It was a long first run for his teammate. And he's pacing himself nicely to Julian Andlauer, who was in that car a little bit earlier on in the piece. So he's got himself mentally at least up to speed a little bit more. And he's been very quick in that car, as you might expect from a Porsche Junior driver. He didn't need a lot of settling in, Jeremy, in that car and was turning some very quick laps. The race, in some ways, has come to that car. Yeah. They certainly had the pace. They didn't have the track position earlier on, but Adlau's stint has put them in with a real chance here. Uh, it certainly has, and, and Klaus Backler also in the, the Faf Porsche, just a few cars ahead of him on the racetrack. He's just turned his best lap of the race again, a 52.1 last time around. The race leader, a 52.4. We will have a short Michelin post-race tech. Um, Jeremy, we will lose, so it'll be Shea and I for Michelin post-race tech. That's where we answer your questions. End of the race and the checkered flag is uh, end of competition, but the start of the conversation. We'll have some driver interviews there uh, for you as well. Uh, your points arising, questions, anything you've noticed, hashtag Michelin PRT to uh, at IMSA Radio on Twitter if you don't mind, and we'll rattle through some of those after the chequered flag. And when we are done with our World Feed TV, you can swap over to RS2 IMSA Radio via imsaradio.com. And then, of course, later on this afternoon, this evening, for those of you here in Europe, uh, that will be Michelin Pilot Challenge. Cortef are off the track. Grenier. Mikhail Grenier makes an uncharacteristic mistake coming out of the left-hander and rejoining uh, at the right-hander around about the S's sort of area off on the grass to driver's left. 
had been under intense pressure from Loris Spinelli, uh, who's therefore now up into what will be the fifth position in the class. Now to move Catherine Leg up to sixth. It's been a steady what run. here? Now, he was Oops. going backwards early on, coming out of the left-hander there, Jeremy. Can't see any yeah. damage on the car, so whether he just spun it up on his own. Yes, oh, no. He might have had a little bit of help from the Lamborghini of Laura Spinelli, who you said had been battling with him. Uh, the onboard might tell us that oh, I think there was a push there. It looked like there might have been a very light tap on the back of the AMG. And let's, uh, we've had a pit stop violation as well. That was speeding in the pit lane. Um, stop at 60, a plus 44. I don't think I've seen one that fast before for Aaron Tielitz. He must have either released the pit lane speed limiter too early or not got on it early enough. Yeah, completely forgot about it is what happened. Tell you what, the, the the second, third, and fourth place cars are closing a little bit now on uh, Alex Ribaras in that leading heart of racing Aston Martin. The gap now for first and second is down to a second. It was out as high as 1.7 uh, about what, two, three, four, seven laps ago. So uh, Ben Barnica, he's pulled in about a tenth of a second over the Aston over the last six or seven laps. Can he maintain that? Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio if you would like to be a part of that show coming up after this race. We've got to work out who our Nose Strategy goes, Award goes to. BDO, the Global Accounting Tax and, and Advisory Services. Well, they're no financial strategy and they're looking to reward our race strategy. Share Adam, who uh, is yours going to go? Who is yours going to? We've still got um, half an hour or so to go, but who's who's got your attention so far? 23 everybody. Heart of Racing team. They, they Well, yes, everybody. Uh, but they particularly came in this weekend in desperate need of some good luck. They started out with the pole position, and they have gotten themselves back to the lead of the race after a pit stop went a little dry and a little bit long by racing their way there and strategizing to not come into the pit lane when everyone else did. Yeah, um... They've actually done pretty well with their 27 car uh, as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the Faf uh, Porsche in there. It has got a bit more pace uh, this weekend, but it's clearly not the fastest of the GTD Pro cars. And also Gradient Racing, who've been struggling for straight line speed this weekend. And with a bit of help from Catherine Legg, uh, and some, they did two very quick pit stops uh, either side of yellows or just before a yellow. And then uh, again, after the... Um, driver time was up to uh, make sure that that uh, pit stop was shorter uh, they're now up to sixth position jeremy uh, your thoughts uh, right now i like the strategy call that vassar solomon has made they came, they were the uh, the first of the uh, of the leaders to blink that's uh, right of this final round of pit stops and uh, uh, i think they've done a really really good job don't, they haven't got the pace of the porsche this weekend i don't think quite um although maybe they have uh, it, it's, it's super tough, but I th I, their strategic call was really, really, really good. Got to hand it also to uh, uh, Kelly Boss with Riley for that uh, number 92 car yes. to get it up to second position in the class. That's been a tremendous effort. And look, Loris Spinelli uh, in that Forte Racing Power Bad Lamborghini, despite that uh, penalty early on, assuming they don't get a penalty now for uh, after the we saw the, the other car spinning off the road, uh, they've done a great job to get back up to fifth place. Yes, it's been investigated at the moment. So that was only half the grid we've nominated uh, uh, for that. Just going through a few other changes. We mentioned Brian Sellers coming through the field. So is uh, Seb Priol. They've now moved up uh, respectively. The AO Racing number 80, the bright green uh, Rexy car. That's now up the seventh. Brian Sellers up into eighth. They've both got by Chandler Hull. Uh, so they are moving up through the field. Daniel Hukadea coming through the GTD cars as well and splits them for a moment. Catherine Leggett sixth, Laura Spinelli in fifth, Robbie Forley fourth for Turner Motorsport in GTD, Trent Hinman in third for Wright Motorsports, Gillian Andler in second. Still just that tantalising 
half a second behind the number 27 of Mark Moore Sorensen. And those top three cars are still pretty much tied together. There's about one and a half seconds between them and Robbie Foley, which I seem to remember seeing about three laps after the restart. That yeah. just hasn't changed at no. all. Quite it's extraordinary. That's exactly right, John. It has been exactly the same. I mean, absolutely matching lap times there is Robbie Foley. Once again, a really, really uh, good stint uh, for for uh, Robbie, who had a, a birthday uh, just a couple of days ago. Where are we now? Saturday, Thursday was his birthday. Happy birthday to you, Robbie. And it's been a really good run. I mean, uh, you know, local team here, relatively speaking, from the Boston area. Uh, and uh, he's running there in that fourth position. Alex Riberas just trying to stretch away that lead now. He's not able and to, is he? He just can't make the break, can he? A second yeah. between himself and Ben Barnicott in second. Yeah. The battle in GTD, yeah. the three cars, the Hartner Racing Aston, and then the two Porsches, the darker coloured Aston, the red and white Porsche, the bright yellow with a bit of black on it for the third car coming through the final corner now and onto the front straight. They are absolutely equidistant. You could almost get a ruler out and measure them as they go across the stripe to complete their 133rd lap with 30 minutes to go here. And what is left to come? What is left to come? Because this has been a race that has been full of talking points of really impressive driving, of pace, of strategy, pit lane uh, incidents as well. Now, let's hope it does get settled on the track, but who has got anything left, oh, Jeremy? That's the thing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the, the harder racing team, uh, the Aston Martins lead both classes right now, but uh, Alex Riberas uh, in the lead, that gap last time around was seven tenths of a second. It came down three tenths on that last lap, and Barnegat now even closer uh, as they cross the line to complete lap 134. Uh, meanwhile, just a few seconds back down the racetrack, uh, Marco Sorensen still has his hands full ahead of those two Porsches that are knocking on his tail behind him. And the number 97, Chandler Hull, also with mirrors full. Phil Ellis cruises through on the inside down towards turn seven. That's not an easy pass to do. Door was slightly opened by Mick Grenier, I think, as well. Uh, uh, by Phil Ellis, rather, for Mick Grenier as well. As they have now both gone past Chandler Hull, who, as Jeremy said, thought he might find it difficult to hang on to the top ten. He's now in 11th position. But Aaron Tielitz, uh, a good distance behind. So I think Chandler will be all right there. Question is, can uh, Mick Grenier and, Chan uh, and uh, Phil Ellis move forward? It's, there's nothing between these cars now. We, we said we would be talking about these cars as a single category, Jeremy, towards the end of the race. And in terms of the lap times, you're talking about tenths of seconds here and there, maybe a couple of tenths uh, here and yeah. there, but not very much more than that. Backler with a 52.5 last time around. That time stands out for me. That was the quickest lap last time around. Yeah, uh, it was. And uh, Alex Ribras now 52.8s so each of the last two laps. He was doing 52.5s, 52.4s before that, now doing 52.8s. And Ben Barnicott is uh, lurking menacingly behind in that Vassar Sullivan Lexus and right behind him is that Klaus Mackler car. Still with the flappy front right wing on that hoving interview. Jordan Taylor and the Corvette maybe getting a second win there and almost back onto that breakaway three. They've almost bridged that gap. We've noticed that Vassar Sullivan number 14 car uh, has almost been sort of pacing itself is what it looked like in the first part of the race. And I wonder if they're doing the same here, Jeremy. They did have to break off for tyres before the Aston in the last long green flag run. So they'll have surely learned from that and must know that they can't do that this time. They can't give away the performance at the end of the race. Yeah, true. <laughs> This is, this is just a, a fascinating cat and mouse contest now. We've got, to, what, 27 minutes remaining in this race, so it could be another 30 laps uh, at least. Uh, so this is, yeah, it go, there goes, time goes past pretty quickly. Yes, so do the laps, but also so does the stress level, I think, for these guys running out front at the moment. It's a great four-car battle. Aston Martin, Lexus, Porsche, Chevrolet, covered by just, what, two or three car lengths between them, perhaps. 
Well, talking of Vassar Sullivan and Lexus, let's have a word with Jack Hawksworth down in the pit lane with Shay Adam. All right, Jack, it's one thing before the race when you're strategizing about what could happen and you think we're ahead of people we're racing in the championship. That's all we need. But now you're ahead of them and you got a shot at the win. Does things go a little bit haywire in a driver's brain at that point? Well, it's been a, it's been a, I mean, coming into the race, we knew it was going to be super complex in terms of strategy and stuff. And uh, that's just how it's played out. Uh, Obviously, that first stop, the guys did a really good job. We pulled the trigger on the undercuts, got to the uh, cycle to the front, so that was mega. Um, and then, obviously, safety car come out, uh, asked him, stayed out. We we all splashed. And then, uh, I think the Corvette took two left, so, um, you know, just been kind of different tyre different strategies and different fuel strategies all day. But the guys have called it perfectly on the pit wall, and uh, we're in a great position here. So, um, it's super tight at the front. It looks like all four guys are, are right together, so. Always very hard to pass pass at this track, so we'll see what happens. But uh, certainly been a good day so far. So guys have been proper, and Ben's out there giving it the beans now. So mega day so far. Do you think you guys have the tire life to be able to challenge at the end of this stint? Maybe it'll be interesting because uh, it'll be the first full stint we've had where all the cars have got four brand new uh, brand new tires on from the same point. So uh, uh, the first felt pretty good tire life. That second stint was a bit more difficult, but. Then the cars behind us had fresher tyres, so uh, we'll see. This will be interesting, obviously, 25 minutes to go, which is about a 1,000 laps around here, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. I don't think they know. I'm, I'm, lis I'm listening to that, Jeremy, and, I mean, again, great question from Shay. I honestly don't think they know what's going to happen because, as he said, they've not done this kind of longevity in a race run. Um, it's actually not a 1,000 laps, Jack. It's uh, only 9.75. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you, they did 42 laps uh, to begin this race. Uh, we've now done uh, 13, 26 uh, since we went back to uh, to green, uh, and still, as you say, with 25 minutes to go, or just less. So, be another 27 or 8, 28 laps, so a little bit more than it was uh, before uh, the opening stint of this race. But this is just a, a really, really fascinating battle going on at the front of the field. Again, I think uh, Alex Ribras here, you know, he's been around this sport a long, long time. He He's managing things at this moment. He doesn't need to pull away. All he needs to do is stay in front. So we're on lap 140 at the moment. Uh, for GTD Pro, the distance record is, I think, 174. Uh, the GTD lap record, uh, that was from last year. The GTD lap record is, I think, a bit more than that. She Adam will have the number. 178, and that was from 2019, 178. Okay. Green race. Yeah, clearly. We're not going to be a million miles. No, we're not going to get that. We're not going to, we're not going to be a million miles away from it, but we're not going to get to it um, unless somebody picks up their pace considerably. Brian Sellers, eighth position at the moment in GTD, 13th overall. Uh, Daniel Uncadella went by him a few laps ago and has now pulled out five seconds. Uh, one. Yeah, five seconds uh, on him. No, 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 no. Sellers Sel is making up. Making up. He's he's made the passes. Uh, Uncadella was was ahead of him. Uh, all the way through. Uh, and in fact, he's, he's, he's brought that gap down a little bit, has uh, Sellers to Junkadela. Uh, uh, but Seb Prio did get past Daniel yes. Junkadela about whew, 10 laps or so ago in the uh, AO Porsche. Just to follow up a couple of stories Brendan Arrive, that big accident that brought out the most recent uh, uh, neutralisation by the Acura safety car. Uh, Brendan has been walking around, he's been seen in the paddock, Shea's had a word with him. Um, I suspect that where his straps were will uh, be a bit sore tomorrow. Shea, did he, did he say anything about it? Did he say whether he was tapped or whether that was just a mistake as he was coming into the pit lane or did he not know? No, he didn't. Uh, I didn't ask him about that in fairness, John. I just wanted to make sure that he was okay. But the team did say they thought it was his error, uh, that he was not hit when the incident did happen. Hasn't been looked at, in fairness. So, I think Ben Barnicott must have locked up his right front wheel. And that was the puff of smoke that was visible uh, as the McLaren speared off to the right. Haven't had anything definitive from Andretti yet about Jarrett Andretti and his 
incident but again he was out the car under uh, his own steam and uh, if we can get anything from the team before the end of the race we'll let you know with 21 minutes to go still that sort of jaunty eyed uh, right hand side front wing it's, I think it's coming further away from the back of the wheel uh, on that number nine Faf racing car the Faf machine at Klaus Backler it's the back edge of it that's starting to wave around. Looks like an old Group 5 car. It's so wide now. Uh, younger members of our audience, you might want to go and look that up on a website of some description. Still holding on there. But the top four are now back together. Jordan Taylor is back onto that group, Jeremy. But sitting, and it seems to me that the, 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 the distance, about the right distance to sit behind a car is about a half to three quarters of a second and at that point you're still getting a little bit of help down the straight but what you're not doing is scrubbing your front wheels across and getting aero push because that's what we're, we've seen for such a long time now these drivers must have worked that out that's no coincidence is it no i i think if they get much closer than that then they are going to be scrubbing the speed particularly coming through the downhill you know this this uh, track is really hard on tires and that downhill corner is super fast super commitment uh, and if you're close to behind somebody else you are going to lose some aerodynamic uh, downforce on the car and therefore the, the, the car is going to slide a little bit more work those tires even harder than they were when they're on their own so it's uh, pretty much cat and mouse i think at this stage nobody wants to really show their hand uh, I think uh, we're still with 20 minutes to go, but it's, it's, it is going to be very, very difficult for anybody to force any kind of uh, overtaking move. Just looking behind us, uh, trio battling for GTD. Uh, Robbie Foley is still hanging right there. That second and a half or so is a little bit, uh, maybe a couple of tenths more than that. But right behind him is Loris Spinelli in that uh, Forte Racing Lamborghini. He's lurking there, looks really fast in that number 78 car. At IMSA Radio, hashtag Michelin PRT for post-race tech, which comes up straight after the checkered flag. We'll have some driver reaction, plus your questions and comments, please. Hashtag Michelin PRT at IMSA Radio. It's for those of you who continue to tune in on RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited Network of channels, it's all free. No blocks, no breaks for all of the IMSA events. We've got some uh, Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup to come for you next weekend. She and I on duty for that from uh, Road America, where they're running with uh, the uh, NASCAR series. Running with trucks or Xfinity there. It's Xfinity, I think, they're running with there uh, next weekend. Two races to come for Porsche Deluxe Carrera Cup. Would have loved to have seen those around here. Home racetrack for Kelly Moss. Oh, very much course. so. Yeah. Based in Madison, Wisconsin. Cracking championship that's been this year. Again, some very good young drivers uh, in that. And Riley Dickinson will come into the weekend defending his championship lead. Checking down through the field, Robbie Foley, first step off the box in GTD. He's in fourth for Turner Motorsport. Comes out the final corner now in the yellow and blue. H&R and uh, Turner Motorsport car, the BMW and the black and green Lamborghini, which has been in the wars this weekend. Incident involving cars 78 and 32, inconclusive, say race control. So no penalty can be applied if they don't feel they don't have the enough information or evidence. They might like have a look at the onboard from the uh, Lamborghini if there is one at the end of the procedures. I don't think they have the onboard from that car available to them at the moment because it was the the potential was that Lamborghini made contact with the rear end of the uh, Mercedes, but uh, there was no, as, as we say, no definitive evidence from the uh, cameras that were available to race control. And they have a lot more than we see even on our World Feed TV and a quick thank you to all of our camera operators of course a very quick rig in and rig out this weekend uh, always working very hard over the last couple of days and uh, special mention for Bubba Clark who's not here this weekend 
as he normally is with BSI, helping out. He's at the uh, British Open uh, this weekend. Along with Jim Deason, I think, as well. Uh, who's normally part of our happy bat. Uh, up at Royal Hoylick. Final round there tomorrow. Yeah, that could be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, the um, the leaders, by the way, just uh, heading around Big Bend now, and not too far ahead of them is Chandler Hull in that turn of most what BMW. The uh, Aaron Tealitz Lexus, that's a lap down after its couple of uh, extra pit stops, uh, but uh, Chandler Hull is uh, kind of next in line for that leading pack of four cars. So that might be potentially create some kind of an opportunity for one or other of those leading contenders. Coming Keep down. Lap times. Excuse me, just John. John oh, lap times for leaders. Uh, 53.2 last time. He was doing 52 nines pretty consistently. Last time was a 53.2. And uh, as we can see coming out of... Uh, the downhill turn, they're going to close up on that uh, BMW, the uh, Macintosh liveried car, the uh, blue and, and, and grey. And I'm sure the other contenders who are lined up behind Alex Rebras are going to try and close in so they are able to take advantage of any opportunities that might present themselves. Yes, you do not want to miss what could potentially be the one and only opportunity around here. It is difficult to at pass and if you can get a little helping hand from somebody that slows up the car in front of you post race tech still to come hashtag Michelin PRT let's have your thoughts people on what you've seen and heard this weekend Uh, we'll go through that. We'll have some driver interviews as well. Pretty quick wrap-up for our World Feed TV today because of the continuing action. It uh, really is a super Saturday at Lime Rock Park this weekend. But we will be back with you for the Mission Pilot Challenge, a 100-minute TCR only race later on this afternoon. That's our final action of the weekend. Yeah, look, at the, the leaders are right with, I think, uh, Chandler Hill. I want to see that battle for the lead, and uh, we're watching this battle for GTD, which is intense, but um, they're just sort of kind of running nose to tail. The leaders, the uh, overall leaders, GTD Pro, are coming up to try and put a lap on Chandler Hill. They're coming down the uh, uh, toward the end of another lap, I think. Yeah, that's the battle I want to see right now. We'll keep an eye on that while Shea has a quick word with Alec Udell down in the pit lane. Well done, John. Well, Blair. Alec, your job is done at this point in the race, but how much is left in the tires, do you think, for Julian? Can he have a go at the Aston Martin? You know, I think everyone's in the same boat right now. It's it's pushed all the way to the end, and if you've got a little bit left on the tires, I don't know. <laughs> I think everyone's just managing with the grip. The temperature's obviously rising throughout the day. We're at, like, the hottest point in the day, so all the cars are hot, the drivers are hot, the tires are, you know, at their limit, so it's kind of the longest that we've seen these tires really run this whole weekend, so... Yeah, it's just now up to them to uh, battle it out to the end. The man sitting next to you on the pit box is one Mr. Bill Riley. How much does it help having him on your side? Yeah, I think it's great. There's a ton of knowledge that comes to the team with uh, Bill's experience as well as all the crew that he's got around him. You know, I think that's what it is as an organization. You've got the guy who runs and steers the ship and surrounds himself with good people. And, you know, that's what we've got here with uh, the Kelly Moss and Riley team. So very happy to be a part of it. And, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, just making small improvements with the car each time out. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks, Shay. Appreciate it. Same story, Jeremy, from uh, when we were talking to other drivers. <laughs> this, we, are, we are launching into the unknown. It's a bit of Star Trek. They are boldly going where uh, no drivers have gone before this weekend in terms of tyre life. Brilliant, isn't it? And uh, absolutely fascinating. And the hats off to Chandler Hull. Though. He saw those leaders coming up uh, behind him and he pulled out of the way on the uh, on the main front straightaway, on the San Posey straightaway, allowed that leading pack to go through. Uh, then of no concern to him. So hats off uh, to, to Chandler Hull there for doing absolutely the right thing uh, from yeah. uh, everybody's perspective. And boy, this is uh, interesting. Now, just look at the lap times, 53-2. It was last time around, 53-0 this time around now, just inside 12 minutes to go. I'm sure um, we know how Turner Motorsport race and how they like to go racing. 
I'm sure he was getting help from the pit wall as well. So a good team effort there. Not their day today for that number 97 car. Well, they do not want to be involved in messing up somebody else's race. And uh, that racing karma comes around now and again. And that's a, that's a team who play by the rules. Uh, well done to all concerned there. Uh, we've got Robbie Foley for them up in fourth in GTD at the moment and just three seconds behind Trent Hinman, who's in third. He's half a second behind Julian Andler, uh, who's half a second behind Marco Sorensen. That three-car battle, that's almost a four-car battle. Now, there is a four-car battle for GT Pro League. They're going round Big Bend right now on their 156th lap with 11 minutes on the nosy to go. I, look, I, I said this earlier on the weekend. I, I've been watching the Tour de France, as I'm sure many of you have, for the last couple of weeks, and and this looks like the breakaway. I mean, who's you know who's going to blink first? Who's going to say right? I'm going from a long way out, or I'm going to put a fast couple of laps in. I'm not sure who's got instead of who's got the the performance in their legs. It's who's got the performance in their tyres at the moment. And I, I'm just thinking to myself that Jordan Taylor, having got on the back of this about 20 minutes ago now, has just been lurking there, not tried to make any positions up, might just be a little bit too far back for the overall victory, but surely got to be thinking about a podium. It, it's per many three from those four for the podium in any order, Jeremy. And look, it's around about now that uh, all these GTD pro guys running up front wish that there were some prototypes on the racetrack to perhaps give them some sort of opportunity to make a pass. Because um, yeah, right now it's it's kind of status quo between them. They're very, very closely matched. They've all turned really fast laps. They're all trying to look after their, their Michelin tyres as best they can. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the onus now is on not to make a mistake. That's not how we want to see this race decided either we'll give it another couple of three minutes before we go through the team again for our BDO nose strategy award just one to give out per IMSA WeatherTech sports car championship race 17 cars remaining there's very few people done much wrong this weekend so who has stood out we've had three Retirement, Brendan Arabe in the wall with the Inception Racing McLaren, the number 70 car, as he was actually coming into the pits at the end of what had been a really stellar run from him. Very stout indeed. Done a, a much longer run than normal. Alan Metney had the accident with Jarrett Andretti when he drove into the Andretti Autosport. Aston Martin took them both out. Subsequently, Jarrett on the spot in the barriers at Turn 1. Big bend and Alan Mendy did get back to the pits, but Kelly Moss with Riley put that car behind the wall and retired it. Alan was assessed uh, incident responsibility for that. Obviously, he can't serve that, uh, but everybody down pit road and most importantly, Alan knows uh, that he was pinged for that. He's not that type of driver, Alan. It looked like he just made a mistake on his breaking point, and uh, at that point on the circuit. He was heading off himself, had the Andretti Autosport Aston Martin advantage not been in the way. Not been a happy two races for Jarrett Andretti in Andretti Autosport. His teammate, Gabby Chavez, has not been in the car in race trim. Yeah, it's really unfortunate for that team. And uh, all of a sudden now, uh, Loris Spinelli lost a little bit of ground here to Robbie Foley, who's actually closing in on that uh, leading trio in GTD. Uh, Marco Sorensen has been uh, losing a bit of ground. He's losing a couple of three tenths of a second a lap to the GTD Pro cars ahead of him, but staying ahead uh, of uh, Julian Adler and Trent him and two Porsches. But last couple of laps, Robbie Foley's just got a little bit closer in fourth position. Could have, by the end of this race, two four-car battles for three spots on the podium. Another thing to watch is that Seb Prio is closing in now on Catherine Legg, uh, and he's now under a second. He was about half a second. Uh, that uh, that's, uh, he's that's been, been there the or thereabouts for a little while. Yeah. In fairness, yeah, yeah no, a long time. Yeah. Uh, because uh, they, they were, they were, they were, there were three cars notes to sell: 66, 77, 79, and 80. Number 80, Sebastian Prio got past number 79 car. 
uh, and uh, for a while did pull away a little bit, but uh, not the case now. Uh, so that, that three-car battle that remains with Catholic leg at the head of it. Danny Junkadea has not moved up the field at all um, in that WeatherTech car. They were pinged, remember, a drive-through for leaving the pits with pit lane equipment attached. Uh, so he was out with all of the other pro drivers there. But I did think that car maybe had a little bit more pace, but it, uh, it lost, as Jeremy said, lost a bit of ground. Don't know whether they've got an in intermittent problem or something that Danny J is having to drive around at the moment. Brian Sellers, another 4.8 seconds uh, further back. Then Phil Ellis, seven seconds further behind that. Mickey Grenier, Miguel Grenier, uh, two seconds behind that. Chandler Hall, uh, another half a minute. Aaron Tealitz running for off the lead lap now after the trials and tribulations of the number 12, Vassar Sullivan. Lexus, not their day either. I think we can Oops, file so that one. There's a slide in. for uh, Ben Barnicut. Yeah. Big slide in the middle of Big Bend. That car is beginning to lose traction, isn't it? That was a big four-wheel drift there. And now, well, that's great news for Alex Riveras, who all of a sudden has got about a second and a half. Now, did Ben just miss a breaking point? Did he get offline? There'll be a bit of rubber debris offline, the marbles, as the drivers call it. Or is it now, in the last five or six laps, is this our Porsche key to the race and the tyres? That was one of the cars that came in to change the tyres at the earlier portion in that long green flag run earlier on, and it was round about now. In fact, they've gone beyond Jeremy, haven't they, as far as they went before in terms of laps out there. And Jordan Taylor just lurks, shark-like, yeah. or stingray-like, of course, in that Corvette. But that's actually done a massive favour for Hart a racing team. Just came in maybe a little bit hot, took a tiny bit too much kerb on the right-hand side. That was, I mean, that's fine margins, Jeremy, but if you are on the ragged edge of adhesion at the end of tyre life, that's the sort of thing that makes a difference. Yeah. Oh boy, isn't it just, and uh, one we talked about, didn't we, just don't make a mistake, because if you don't make a mistake, you could probably hang on here, but tyre wear is certainly a, a, an issue now, the last lap for the leader, 53.4, he did a whole string of 53.2s, 52.3s, uh, now 53.4, so they're, just, they're losing just a little bit of performance. But last time around for Ben Barnicut was a 53-2. So uh, this is just a fascinating contest. And meanwhile, not far behind, we've got the same thing going on uh, with the uh, with the other Aston Martin holding on again ahead of two Porsches. Marco Sorensen and Julian Andlau are having a cracking battle uh, for first and second. They were as close as I've seen them across the line, under four tenths of a second. Trent Hinman lurks there, another four tenths further back. Yeah. Robbie Foley is definitely closing. It's it's yeah. inching. This is like a 10,000 metre runner coming slowly, slowly, lap after lap. He hasn't charged up to the back of them, but it's now under two seconds, that gap, Jeremy. It is, and he's got his teammate Chandler Hull between him as well. Uh, but uh, Marco Sorensen is certainly struggling in number 27, Aston Martin, leading GTD. Uh, his last lap around was a 54-3. That's the slowest lap we've seen for anybody for quite a long time, uh, certainly any of the contenders. Uh, and uh, he's going to hang on now with uh, under three minutes to go, just three more laps uh, for him to uh, hold on to that GTD lead. And Lauer still there. What tactically, Kelly Moss with Riley have done a cracking job. They didn't have the track position. And Julian on a slap. Oh, that's interesting. That car is, that wing front wing on the car as well. The right front wing on the 92 car is moving around. So that's the Faf car and the Kelly Moss car have both popped their right front at fender catches. Now that's nowhere near as bad as the the faf number nine but it is certainly moving around and it's come unfastened it's lifting down the front straight it hasn't come quite as far away from its fastenings at the front around the bonnet edge the bottom uh, of the, the 
bottom right of the bonnet is where it's tucked under. Now that's what's come away on the faff car, on the faff car, but that is waving around in a very similar manner. Wow! So that is something we're going to have to keep an eye on. They've done so well to get that car up to second position in that race. Surely that's not going to be robbed from them. Riberas, a second was the gap last time across the line. Here they come. Two laps to go. As they cross the line this time, we'll have 168 laps in the book, so not troubling the 174 or 178 lap record as they have three miles and Alex Riberas, I reckon, doesn't make a mistake, he wins this race. Sure. Uh, but uh, the, the, the other Aston Martin, Marcus Sorsen, he's really struggling. Yeah, 53, well, he got it at 53.7, so a bit quicker last time around. But he's losing two, three, four tenths of a lap compared to the GGD Pro cars ahead of him. Our BDO, no strategy awards, BDO accounting, global accounting tax and advisory services. They're no finance, they're rewarding good strategy. And as they come to the white flag this time around, Jeremy Shaw mentioned Kelly Ross, Kelly Moss with Riley in second place in GTD. They will get our BDO Nose Strategy Award for this race. Car that they went off strategy to everyone else. Julian Andlauer in the car much earlier and pulled his way through. They've made that one work and they're on the podium might even be better than that. At the front of the field, honourable mention to Harker Racing in the 23 and Vassar Sullivan in the 14. Hello to Gary Paravani, who is tuned in as well and would be here to get the shot, I'm sure, of a brilliant race. The Aston Martin, light on its Michelin tyres, wins for Heart of Racing team from Vassa Sullivan in second. And Faf Motorsport with the wagging right front wing, wing in third. Let's see GTD across the line. Heart of Racing double up with Sorensen from Andlar and Kelly Moss and Wright Motorsport in third place. Shea Adam can only be in one place at the heart of the Heart of Racing. <laughs> And with the biggest heartbeat in this paddock, it, part of the reason that this team runs so well is Ian James, and one of his drivers is none other than Roman DeAngelis. Roman is just walking back over to the wall because he wants to congratulate his guys up on the box as well. Phil is the guy who's engineered this team to so many victories before, and for Roman to be able to win again. Buddy, the last time I was talking to you, it was after you won the 24 Hours of Daytona, and you were just crying. There was so much emotion. You know what it's like to win at Lime Rock Park, but to do it again, what does it feel like? Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's been a long, long few weekends for us. Um, haven't had the best results. I think we've, we've always had a strong car and a good lineup and a great team, but to finally get a win, have it on Ian's 50th birthday, if you didn't know, yeah. And, uh, yeah, to have both cars win is awesome. So, finally, hopefully, this streak of bad luck over and we can start getting points back and hopefully a winner championship so congrats on today this was mega thank you yeah and especially if it's ian's birthday we got to jump in with him uh ian just heard that today is your birthday congratulations the team gave you the best present possible a double win i know a double win on my birthday you couldn't uh, write that script can you so <laughs> can it be your birthday every day of the year i wish it was <laughs> what's it like to get this double win because this is the second time that you guys have done this as a team well, you know, the Lexus team matched us uh, recently, so I, yeah, I guess we had to double down and make it uh, two, so uh, give them a new target to aim for. How big's the party tonight? Uh, hopefully it'll be very big. <laughs> Congrats, mate. Thank you. And let's see I if can we can find that. Ross. Uh, and... yeah, exactly, John, you know the answer to that. Uh, Ross has disappeared. I'll shout out when I got him. Thank you, Shea. Well, that has broken a streak of very unfortunate circumstances for Heart of Racing team in the best possible way on Ian James at one of the team principal's birthday. And they have doubled up in GTD Pro and GTD. That is an extraordinary. What a race, Jeremy. You called it cat and mouse. It was fascinating. You mentioned that word as well. It was all about who had the performance at the end. And let's be honest, Jeremy, there weren't 
many uh, uh, attempts at passing there at the end because nobody was making mistakes. They were all driving brilliantly. Uh, they were uh, super consistent lap times as well. And uh, you're know, looking after the cars, looking after the equipment, not making any mistakes. That's what uh, brought the victory. Good strategy as well, certainly. But uh, that was a, a really hard earned victory for the uh, hard racing team in both classes. That is fairly amazing to do that. So hats off to the entire organization for that. That was a tremendous, exciting rider race. I'll let you quickly do the addition. I know you've got to get away in a few moments' time. Uh, remember, it is uh, hashtag Michelin PRT. Uh, we'll uh, quickly recap the results in a moment after Jeremy gives us the points situation. Unofficial as it stands at the moment because they've got to go through uh, their post-race tech before uh, after we've got two hours. How's things standing, Jeremy? Well, uh no, uh, may, no changes really uh, in the uh, in the order. Well, yeah, no. Corvette Racing will move ahead of WeatherTech Racing. Uh, so Vassar Sullivan, the uh, Ben Barnicat and Jack Hawksworth, they'll have 24-62, 23-11 for Corvette Racing in second position. They'll move ahead of WeatherTech Racing now, 23-02, and just uh, 21 points behind them are Faf Motorsports uh, in the uh, Porsche. Same points also in the Manufacturers Championship GTD Pro. In, in GTD, if you want to do that quickly, uh, Paul Miller Racing will still, still lead pretty handily. 22-26 uh, to the 21-40 of the number 27 hard racing team. The man moved much closer in second place and well clear of uh, Vassar Sullivan in third. In the Sprint Cup Championship, however, with the win today, Roman DeAndres and Marco Sorensen will move ahead by 60 points unofficially of Brian Sellers and Madison Snow. Uh, let's speak to Ross Good now with Shea Adam. Ross, the car just pulling up on the pit lane. Big round of applause. You guys finally did it. How sweet does it win feel? Ah, this feels indescribable. I mean, it's been uh, such a tough year. And um, just everything came together today. Everything, the pit stops were mega. The, the strategy in the end really played out in terms of not using the yellow to stop. And um, it's, it just feels amazing. Alex drove an, an immaculate stint. And uh, yeah, just, just so happy. Really, really happy. How prominently is this trophy going to feature in your cabinet? Oh, it's going to be up there, it's particularly after the last three or four months that I've had. I'm going to remember this for a long time. So, um, yeah, that's going to go right at the front. Congrats, mate. Thank you. Thank you to Jeremy Shaw and to Shea Adam. Unofficially, let's uh, let's uh, get back to the results. Heart of Racing win in GTD with the number 23, Aston Martin. Three tenths of a second at the line over Ben Barnicott and Vassa Sullivan in the Lexus number 14 in second. Faf Motorsport in third. Brilliant run for them as well. Jordan Taylor and the top four uh, in Corvette in fourth. Top four separated by 1.1 seconds uh, at the end of a 168 laps. Similar close affair in GTD with Harder Racing taking that one as well with their number 27 car ahead of Kelly Moss, another Porsche uh, on the podium in second. The number 92 car winning our BDO Nose Strategy Award as well for going well off uh, tactics with uh, what was going on around them. Didn't look like it was going to work, but it did. Trent Hinman brought the right motorsports Porsche home in third, the number 77 uh, in GT uh, Daytona. And that again was just on a second between the top three. Heart of Racing in the uh, victory circle area. And uh, what a run for Alex Riperas. <laughs> He's out the car, and he is very, very excited indeed. Here's his teammate coming to congratulate him. Shea Adam is there, as is Babendum. Uh, just you and me, Shea, so let's uh, get some of that atmosphere. And there's going to be four very happy Heart of Racing team drivers this weekend. Shea? over to Marco Sorensen, uh, who is taking his helmet off. And let's see if we can have a chat with the Danish driver because not that many starts in the Emsa WeatherTech Sports Car Championship and now two wins and two very important wins nonetheless. We talked to Marco in the race and he was pretty chill about this, had a big smile on his face. And now he's a race winner once again in this series. Marco, you got 
the win. You got it done in very difficult conditions. How much tire life did you have in these Michelins by the end of the race? I think li literally nothing, to be fair. <laughs> it literally felt like driving on ice. I think everyone, for everyone, it's really hard degradation out there. Um, but it felt like, especially for us, uh, so I felt a little bit like I was holding the two Porsches up. So it was just about not making any mistakes and just driving what I had today. Uh, and uh, in the end, it was enough. <laughs> Congrats on the win. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see if I can dive over Alex now, because he'll have had his helmet off by this point, uh, John. And he's going to be celebrating pretty hard with his Art of Racing team. But for Alex, this is the first win at Lime Rock Park. It's been a long time coming. Alex, you did it. You got the win. It's been, what, a year and two months since your last win. How does this feel? Yeah, it feels very special for sure. Uh, yeah, I, again, thanks to the team. Uh, we've been saying the whole weekend, you know, uh, making sure Ian has made it a, a very uh, good point to the whole team of drivers to make sure we go one by one to every one of the crew because the hours they spent making, the, making sure the car was ready for this race is, I mean, unbelievable. It's, it's hard to say how thankful we feel towards them and they deserve this win more than anyone so I'm, I'm so happy for them I'm so happy for them I'm so happy for Gabe I'm so happy for the heart of racing it's a it's a great day it's a hot day and now you get to give your boys a little champagne so it's perfect oh yeah some of them are going to the airport directly so to those who sit next to them I'm, I'm sorry in advance but they're gonna smell <laughs> congrats mi amor let's go